Wednesday, January 20th, 2021. Flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Get minutes. Do have minutes. Okay. Uh, motion to approve January 6th and January 11th commission meeting minutes. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shanago? Yes. Okay, John. So this is our second public hearing in regards to water and sewer rates. So let's just do it again. Okay, hi guys, I'm John Rufo. I'm with the Erie County Department of Environmental Services. Um, I am going to talk about uh, water and sewer rate increases today. Uh, first, a little bit of a recap. We were here about a year ago and uh, we were discussing potential rate increases in the near future at that time. And uh, there were some concerns that, you know, at that, at that point in time, we didn't really know for sure how much money we were looking at having to spend to fix some problems with our sewers and um, problems with our wastewater plants. So basically what came about of all this was uh, federal EPA had observed that we've had a lot of overflows in our sanitary sewer systems along with our wastewater plants. Would you define what, cons what an overflow means? Sure. So uh, an overflow is usually caused, in our case, is caused from INI. INI is inflow and in infiltration into the sanitary sewer system. Uh, inflow is where water gets um, discharged directly into the sanitary sewer from, say, a sump pump or a downspout and infiltration is where water enters the sanitary sewer system through either a broken pipe or a pipe joint leak um, a yard drain that kind of thing okay so and we, then continue that why is this the problem so Don't this is a, all just get treated yeah so this is a this is a huge problem because uh when when the sanitary sewers overflow or the wastewater plant overflows we bypass the treatment and raw sewage goes straight down to lake erie so, you know, with the raw sewage, there's E. coli, there's uh, parasites, that kind of thing. And how, how much are we talking about? Uh, millions of gallons. So our flow, for instance, at Sawmill Creek, um, during dry flow, dry weather, our flow is around 500,000 gallons a day. And under a heavy rainfall event, the flow goes up to about 6 million gallons a day. So we can only handle... So, it, so daily flow is 500,000 gallons. Mm -hmm. And in a heavy rain, it goes to six million. six million. Okay, and what's the plant's capacity? Plant's capacity is 1.2 million gallons a day on an average. Um, peak flow is somewhere around 2 million at the most, somewhere around that ballpark. So we would bypass, for instance. So you're talking 4 million gallons a day just yeah. out of sawmill. That's correct. Plus the other bypasses that we have to do in the sanitary sewers. And this doesn't go on one day. This could go on two, three, four days. Sure. Depending on the, the duration of the rain. Because it correct. goes days afterwards, too. That's correct. And then what about the city of Sandusky sewer plant? So the similar situation with the city of Sandusky, um, they have to bypass sewage as well, bypass treatment as well. So same situation, the raw sewage gets discharged to Lake Erie. Set up a much bigger problem on a bigger scale big way bigger scale right that's what's correct. the capacity of their plan 20 million i don't know off the top of my head 20 and we should point to that we do not correct we do not have combined sewers that's correct that's correct so combined we're literally dealing with that i and i as you mentioned yeah. correct combined sewers are sanitary sewers that convey sewage and storm sewers that convey like storm water um, CSOs, combined sewers, combine both of those uh, sources of water or fluid, and uh, it, it all gets treated at that point. Yeah, I didn't, I, I think for purposes of this, one thing I didn't understand was, what, what, what do you mean a combined sewer? Why, why, who is the genius that put sewage and storm water together? But in the olden days, that's what they did. So. The way I understand it is when storm water gets big and it's going down the same pipe, it fills up the pipe, 
and basically mixes with the sanitary, the, you know, the bad stuff. And when it goes into the plant, if the plant says, I don't have enough room, you called it bypass. What, is, what does bypass mean? Bypass means that they would convey the sewage coming into the plant, and instead of it going through treatment systems, so the tanks, uh, different, different functions in the plant, they go around all that. They would just pump it straight to the lake. So whatever would enter the plant, typically it would just go around treatment through some sort of pumps or diversion into the lake or rivers. So a year or two ago, we had EPA orders on state and federal. So is it, it's not exactly called an order, it's called a... It's a federal consent decree. Yeah, it's an administrative consent order technically, is, and it's from the federal government, not the state. Just the fe okay. That's correct. Just federal. And they basically said either you guys agree <clears throat> to this or what's the next step? If we, did told, if we just say, now we're not doing any of this, what happens? Then we would be fined. It's fifty thousand dollars per day per violation. So, say we do have to bypass the sewers or bypass treatment, they could fine us fifty thousand dollars a day. So the problem being is that if we continue to let the water, the storm water, go into the existing sanitary pipes, then we have two options: pay, get a fine, snub our nose, and say here's the fine, or B, build bigger plants. And I know the city of Sandusky has had discussions, I don't know where they went, but there's been discussions about a high flow, 20 high, million? High rate treatment. Is high rate could. treatment. Could you tell me a little bit? That's 20 million, 30 million they're talking about spending. What does that do? supposed to handle higher flows so you know you have the I and I that we experience they have the same thing going on the high rate treatment facility is supposed to handle that flow somehow it treats it to some some sort of standard that EPA would be happy with so spend 20 or 30 million dollars in the Sandusky case can we do the same thing could we build a bigger plant in our case, um, also? We, we could, the problem is we do still have areas in the sanitary sewer that we have to bypass. So it, the sanitary sewer, it surcharges, surcharges when the sanitary backs up. So sewage would, if you open a manhole, which is lid on the sewer system, sewage would go right up to the casting or the top where the lid's at. So to prevent people's basements from flooding, from backups, uh, sewer backups, uh -huh. We have to drop a pump in and bypass the sewage from going down to the plant. Does that happen? Yes. A and lot? Quite a bit. This is one of the items that EPA is focused on, uh, federal EPA is focused on with this order. Yeah, primarily at two locations. That's correct. So in other words, the, the raw sewage can't get in, the, so you could build a bigger pipe. If you had a bigger plant. Yes. So now you'd have to build bigger pipes and bigger plants. Yes, that's correct. And that's all caused by the stormwater. Normally, what they call normal flow, everything goes where it's supposed to go, gets treated where it's supposed to be treated. It's when rain happens. That's correct. Okay. So, and I'm not trying to interrupt the PowerPoint, but I'm trying to make it easier for somebody listening, you know, what, what, why we're talking about what we're talking about. So back in the day, um, we discussed with the, the, the first hearing we had a year or so ago, there was a guy here I remember that in the audience that said, well, you're going to raise the rates. What are you going to do with all the money? Uh, I said, well, we're going to fix it. Well, what are you going to fix? We're not sure. What do you mean you're not sure? Well, we're going to put, I think at that time, we, we rented, bought, uh, flow meters, which is a expensive thing that goes in manhole A and two miles away or five miles away in manhole B. And we wait for it to rain. And when it rains optimally, then we measure those flows and those meters tell us 
couple of things. They tell us, A, how much rainwater comes in, and B, what the abnormal things are like sump pumps or gutter drains because you get a huge amount of water, boom, right now. So, and then the thought process was that you fellas, after you did that in the process, you would go out then and you'd run your cameras down, see if you could see anything obvious, find some what we call big events. And then what we would do is we would start tightening the net. And once we identified a problem child, then we would move the flow meters in, in, in. So, and that, and that process takes a year to do because you gotta wait for it to rain and it's gotta be a particular kind of hard rain, long rain. And so I understand that we did that and we've had a crew out for one year now looking at stuff, which you're gonna show us today. And the logic, which you've told us, is that if, if my understanding, if we can fix the leaks, not all of them, but you know, 50%, 60%, whatever the case is, if we can do something with these leaks, then everybody in Erie County is gonna win because Erie County, our river road and our sawmill plants won't have to be increased. We won't have to build bigger pipes to cover the sewage coming out of the manholes. And then our friends at the city of Sandusky who, are, who we're partners with 50-50 uh, on a, I think I, I just looked yesterday, we still owe 11 more million on our debt schedule on the money we gave the city to partner on their plant. So I look at them as our, our partners. We, we certainly don't want to spend another $20 million bail on a bigger plant if the figures show that we can work together. And to me, it's just logical, stop the leaks, and you don't need to waste all this other money doing everything else. So you're going to spend $20 million. Let's make the system tight so that we don't have manholes overflowing basements backing up with raw sewage into people's houses and most importantly we don't have sewage going out into the greatest asset that we own called Lake Erie I mean that's just common sense to me so so now you're going to tell us what you do for the last year yes that's correct okay so talking about sewer so during 2020 uh, we hired two guys and they helped assist us with our uh, looking for these I and I issues. So the I and I, like I mentioned earlier, it's inflow and filtration. Um, we conducted smoke testing, flow meter monitoring, manhole inspections, walked overgrown trunk sewers that run through the woods that you can't see from the roadway. And uh, we did camera inspections or televising sewer. Uh, to go into detail on each one of those items, uh, for instance, smoke testing, we conducted in specific areas in Erie County. Um, we tried to single in on the worst spots in Erie County that we typically see these I and I events. And uh, for instance, we had 17 residents that were uh, notified of the downspout violations, three were corrected. Uh, and, and we found five roadside storm drains were connected to the sanitary sewer as well. And uh, smoke testing is where you, uh, you can see some pictures there. Um, it's when you take a machine and you blow smoke into the sanitary sewer and wherever the path of least resistance is, the smoke will emit. So you can visually confirm if there's a uh, storm drain connected or say there's a clean out that's open, the smoke would come through that and you'd be able to see it. So uh, in the pictures, the top left, you can see uh, there's a manhole there. There's a little bit of smoke coming out by the road. That's a sign that the uh, manhole is in poor condition. There's a chimney seal leak is what we would call it. Um, same thing with the top middle. Um, the far right picture is evidence that where the downspout discharges could inflow right straight into the sanitary sewer. Um, bottom middle, storm drain tied in and same thing with the uh, bottom left. Uh, these are, this is a map of areas that we smoke tested in Erie County. Again, this is where we looked for the worst areas. When we put our flow meters out, we found 
these are the worst areas that we see the eye and eye at. So we tried to single in on these zones and see what we could find. So the red polygons show where we smoke tested. And uh, here's a map of that. Um, manhole and trunk sewer visual inspections. So uh, part of the EPA consent decree, we're supposed to go out every time it rains one inch of rain and open manholes and try to find areas that you know you could visually see water getting into a manhole or visually see something wrong going on surcharge. So we opened 1,900 manholes in 2020. Uh, we found 169 grout seeps. Grout seeps are where the pipe enters the wall of the manhole and there's a uh, the grout is the seal between that that connection. So 169 of those were leaking. Uh, visible inflow 178. That was if we saw just a stream of water coming in anywhere on the wall of the manhole. Um, water stains another sign of infiltration uh, into the manholes. Evidence of surcharge or surcharge observed. That's where the sanitary sewer actually backs up physically backs up and uh, could risk potential basement <coughs> or overflows such as that. John, how many manholes are there approximately in Erie County? Uh, there is roughly 3,600, so 3,600 manholes. Total? Somewhere so around you, there. You got almost half. Almost, yep. <coughs> <That's right. coughs> roughly 25% of the manholes have a problem. That's correct. Can we fix those problems? Sure, absolutely. We did, we did fix the 1900? Oh, we, we did not fix them. Um, that's a little bit more involved. That's where we're kind of getting to. That's where you got to dig down and cover. Yes. Or, yeah, okay. or lining. Or yeah. So that's some of the stuff we're looking at. Um, some of the evidence that we saw out in the field, um, top left, you can see the, the casting or the metal portion of the manhole was shifted. And uh, there's a hole where water could enter. Uh, this manhole is nearby a stream, so water could get through that gap and the holes in the lid. Um, the top center, uh, that's uh, evidence that the casting had shifted off. The, uh, there's a rubber, it's called a chimney seal. The chimney seal is laying next to the lid on the ground. That should be in the manhole. Um, that casting was ripped off and set back on top where water enter, could enter. Um, the far right picture, that's evidence that the manhole is very degraded. As you could see, you could see actual light shining through the walls of the manhole when you open the lid. So, so the one on the right there, when that <coughs> crick gets, does that crick reach the top of the manhole in a storm? It could. Um, it does go up on the walls of it. I haven't been out there to see you it. You can almost see the low water line there is the yeah. reason I ask. Yeah. Even the high water line looks like it's above it. So. Yeah, it looks like it's above it. Yeah. It could easily, the way the banks were shaped, it could easily go into the, the top of that manhole. So something like that is as simple as maybe taking that top cone off, replacing it, sealing it, and that might be a big big problem right there. Absolutely. And there's a trunk sewer. Is that Pipe Creek trunk sewer? That's uh, Plumbrook Creek. Plumbrook Creek. So I one thing I didn't know is most of the mains are called after creeks for what reason? Uh, typically the trunk sewers, they run in the lowest areas of the topography of the landscape. So they would run Creek. creeks, rivers, streams, that kind of <laughs> that kind of thing. So that's typically where you would see a, a serious problem. So if a manhole lid was open, the creek could back up or the creek could rise and pour right into the manhole, overwhelming sewer. And the one I always wondered is down by uh, Cove Park, that's Pier Track Interceptor. That's a big pipe. And it coincidentally is right next to Lake Erie. And that, that's not part of our system. But it's not part of our system. But it just sidebar. Yeah. I thought I can hear the water running in there even when it's not raining. So yeah. you'd think you'd fix it, but whatever. So uh, bottom middle, uh, that's a evidence or a picture of a manhole with uh, the riser is degraded. You can see the actual bricks of the manhole. Uh, the grout is deteriorated, so water could enter that as well. Um, bottom left, 
that manhole lid has holes in it and it is nearby the stream right there. Um, when that stream backs up, it does go over top of the manhole lid, so water could enter through the holes in the lid of the manhole. Uh, for televised inspections, so we actually um, we actually have this little robot camera and the robot camera crawls through the sewer and we're able to televise and see if there's any leaks in the pipe in the main line. Uh, so we, we did a lot of that during 2020. Uh, we found 29.6, roughly 29.6% of the sewer needs to be rehabbed. Um, Why is that? I mean, what, I, what you guys were telling us last time, which kind of surprised me, is we've got, I don't know how many, how many miles we got in the whole place. We've got roughly 150 miles of pipe. But, and how many of that is clay? I think it was somewhere around a quarter. I was going to say 20, 30 percent. Yeah, I'd say 20, I'd say easily 30, probably around there, with concrete and vitrified clay pipe. Because the clay, in my experience, and I, I guess I'm old enough to know about clay pipes back in the day 40 years ago but they never seem to hold up they crack they chip they, they and when they break they just break told hold it down to nothing unlike a you know plastic pipe really doesn't do that so I was, I was somewhat surprised that we had that much clay so that's got to be what 60 70 years old somewhere around there yeah, we, uh, one of our last contracts we put in 1980, we were using some clay pipe. In 1980? In 1980. And a lot of the I&I &I issues... See, 1980 that, was only a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the Perkins Pirates. That, that was, I was out of school by then, but... So a lot of the I&I &I issues are a result of the clay pipe failures, uh, and same with the concrete pipes in that time frame as well. So we found roughly 270,000 feet uh, should re be repaired. Now, it does boil down to around $30 million, but we realized that would, you know, that would include fixing everything that we're finding. We think or we feel that if we put, say, $5 million into that, we could take those peaks off the I and I that we're having and substantially reduce the issues that we have, we would comply with the EPA then. So let me ask you a question. Can you line a clay pipe? You can. Yep. And, and it, it, is it structural when it's done? It's it's better. It's a lot better than it was. Huh. Um, we're, we are finding... Uh, so it gets hard, the liner? Yes, it does. So you blow the liner in, it's a lot of... Why don't, why don't we explain how that process works? Sure. Because we're doing this. So one method that we've used quite a bit, um, we blow in a, a bag, it's, it's, a, it's like a bag, and uh, it unfolds into the sewer pipe. And once it's in, you can either... But it's a 300, 400 foot long bag. Real long, yeah, very, very long. Uh, the pipe has to be dry. That was one of the other things. It has to be pretty dry. You can't have running water which means you have to close it off That's for correct. a period of time from one manhole to another. That's correct. Okay. You have to bypass flow, as you would call it. Uh, bypass flow and... You pump it when you bypass flow? Yes, yes. That's what you do? Yes, that's what you do. Okay. Typically, you pump it. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, on top of that, you can't have inflow or infiltration coming in through the, the, through the cracks to get a proper cure. Which means it has to be done this summer. So yeah, it has to be done in the summer. A lot of times we have to go in and grout the leaks before we can actually line the pipe to you know, stop get, the water, get right? The water to stop. So uh, the bag gets blown in, and we heat treat the bag you know, either by steam or hot water, and uh, it actually solidifies very, very hard. And so a lot it blows of up. Yep, blows up, fills up the uh, area of the sewer. So my question was, is always will be is when you have the laterals coming from the people's houses, for instance, let's take Bogart Road, for example, house is 50, 60 years old, probably could have a clay pipe on the, on the six inch coming out. How do we fix that? Because that could be broke, leaking. It's not on our property. And that connection where the T comes in, 
I know there's a way I've seen that they could go in, or no, you, you, I think you have to do it from the clean out of the house back, right? Or can you do it from the sewer <clears throat> back? You could do it from the sewer back somewhat. Um, when we've done some of these projects, we've gone in and grouted, they call it grouting. They grout up the lateral 10 feet, 15 feet. That's okay. about as far as they could go. Yeah, does that work? It helps. Um, we haven't been able to blow the bag up the lateral. They That's just, what I was going to ask. Can you put the bag up there? We could, but we haven't done it yet just because of the issues with, uh, you know, it's off the county right away. That's why I asked, can, can the bag take a left and go up the pipe from the, left, from the main? Probably it could if it was a big main, but if it's an 8-inch main, probably not. Probably not. At so that in that point. case, then we'd have to have the permission of the homeowner to come down his clean out if he has one. If he doesn't have one, we'd have to dig in his yard, put one in, and then if we're gonna line the, la the right of way, you know, 12, 15, 20 feet, I guess that'd be one of the things you'd just line the whole thing. Be not that much difference in cost once you're there, I would think. And that's one of the big problems that we've had with areas that we've already done the lining in. Uh, we're finding the main lines pretty good. Connections leak. Exactly. The it's lateral the side. Road. Yep. Bogart Road's a good example of that. A lot of clay laterals and they are leaking. Yeah, it's amazing when you look at these pictures or especially if you see the videos, the volume of water. It's, it's incredible. It's a lot. Because uh, another thing I think for visual, and I don't know if you have a picture of this, we should have done a drawing, but you have a pipe in the ground, and you know, I've, I've done miles and miles of sewer pipes myself, but you fill it with stone. And actually, there you fill water pipes with stone for protection. Um, but the sewer pipes have number eight stone around them too, so if you take 160 miles of stone, number eight, Stone acts like a French drain. It's 20, 25 feet in the ground, so it becomes a collection point for all the groundwater in Erie County. So you're talking hundreds of millions and millions of gallons of water finds its way to this number eight stone, 167 miles long, and eventually it goes somewhere. I don't, I don't know where it goes, but, but it, it collects around the pipe, so the pipe if it's broken, now has a point where for days, maybe weeks, the groundwater is finding its way to that number eight stone and it just keeps leaking. And it's gotta go somewhere, so these hundreds of millions of gallons of water ultimately is draining into the sewer system. Right? That's correct. Can I describe it correctly? That is exactly right. I'm trying to dumb this down. I mean, you know sure. it, but I'm trying to <laughs> explain it for like, uh, for instance, Bogart Road, um, that sewer, it lays approximately six feet deep in the bedrock over in that area. And uh, yeah, it seems like most of the year, the, the water, the infiltration is substantial. Uh, we run the camera through there in summertime, but the water table's down and there's still water getting into that sewer. Because it's um, 15 foot in the ground. Exactly. And there are streams that the uh, they put the pipe under, uh, the, you know, it's the, got the gravel right down to the pipe and uh, the water just finds its way right down to the sewer. So if there's any holes or leaks at all, it would easily enter the sewer system. That's the problem in sewers is they have to be deep in order for it to work. That's correct. So some examples that we were finding with the camera, um, top left shows uh, that's actually a grout leak. Um, that's the, uh, the point where the lateral that you're looking Okay, so you're looking down a main line, um, and on the top of the pipe, there's a lateral that enters the main line. Uh, where the lateral enters the main line, there's a, a, a grout seal that they put in to you know, keep the groundwater out from entering the sanitary sewer. So this is a grout failure, and water is just dumping right into the sewer. Um, that one's actually from Bogart Road, so a good example of that. Um, the top right shows a uh, a pipe structural failure uh, that is bedding or a pipe bedding on the side like I said the right side of that picture um, so if you could see the bedding the water easily gets right through that as well 
Um, bottom left, uh, those are that's a picture of roots that entered the sanitary sewer. Uh, we can correct this. We run, it's called a root cutter. We'll go through and cut the, cut the roots out of the sanitary sewer. Uh, the problem is when the roots develop like that, it takes up capacity in the sewer. So if the pipe cannot handle as much flow as it typically should or could. So uh, the sanitary sewer backs up or it overflows. So the next, what's the next picture? What is that one? Uh, the next picture, bottom right, would be a, a crack. It's hard to see it. There's actually a hairline crack on the top of the pipe. Um, those are mineral deposits from groundwater entering the sewer. That's what that is? Yes. So it shows that there's some future structural issues that could become really bad, just like the one above it uh, with the uh, pipe bedding exposed. Uh, it's, it's on its way there. So, John, I have a friend that has a, a, an issue with a root on a lateral, and the inside of his pipe looks like the one on the right. It looks like it's coated. Okay. Does, on these laterals in people's houses, do the pipes actually get smaller diameter? Uh, the pipe, the laterals are. Uh, typically, they're six because inches. The stuff, I don't want to call it what, <laughs> the bad stuff that's, it builds up? Oh, um, yes, uh, it could. It could. Typically, it, you might see if somebody's dumping grease in their sewer, it would build up. It could be half inch thick. It could be all, it could totally close off the sanitary sewer or the lateral. Yeah. So, if, yeah. Is it cleanable? Can they jet it? Can they it cut is. it? It is. They could uh, typically jet. If we see something like grease, we'll go out and run a jet truck. It's just like a big pressure washer, and uh, we run it down the line. Steam. And, uh, steam or just high pressure. It usually cuts right through. Um, but mineral deposits, it's a little bit different. Uh, that's a little bit harder to remove. But again, it, it usually is an indication that there's a structural issue with the pipe in the future. It could be something like the pipe bedding's going to be exposed, like the picture above it. Up above, yeah. So that's actually the bedding around the pipe is showing. Why doesn't that just fall in and cut? close the sewer off? Um, it slowly does. So it's hard. It's You can't see it here, but down the pipe further away, usually the stone will start to build up somewhere where there's a lower velocity. Um, so the stone is falling in. We get the heavy rainfall event. Velocity of the sewer goes up, and it cleans the sewer out. Hmm. So it takes the pipe bedding and washes it downstream. Hmm. So eventually, there could be a sinkhole that forms on the roadway or another issue like that in somebody's yard hmm. so those are pictures of evidence of some things that we found out there um, there's a lot more than this I didn't want to put too much well, that's what I was gonna say I you know we're talking there's thousands of these cases that's this correct. isn't four cases it's thousands and thousands and thousands of cases that's correct okay. and it's not just one big hole or one big source of water. It's a bunch of small sources like the top left that might look, you know, it looks kind of big, but it might be uh, might be 20 of those in a section of pipe or in a, you know, in a small area. Those leaks all add up to a big, big problem. Well, I think to repeat what you said earlier, that our, our little baby Sawmill Creek plant goes from what to what? Goes from 500,000 to 6 million gallons of flow per day. And then what about our big plant, the River Road plant? Do you know that one? Uh, that one, usually it's around 1.5 million gallons a day, average, 1 to 1.5. And uh, it usually peaks around 5. 5 million? 5 million or so. It's a little bit newer of a system. It's a tighter system. So we got more leaks towards that. Of course, that's the Plum Brook, right? Uh, yes, yeah, Sawmill, Plumbrook, uh, yeah, Sawmill area. Yeah, Plumbrook's, it is, it is really substantially, it's a bad one. Um, that's Bogart Road, that kind of thing over in that area. So some upcoming challenges with things that we're finding with this. Uh, so again, uh, we, we've checked our main lines, we've checked everything within the county right away. Um, now some of the issues that we're, we're seeing is when we go out in camera, you can actually see a sump pump kicking on, kicking off, that kind of thing. Uh, you can see the laterals uh, leaking. You can see the water getting in from private laterals. So 
we're not able to go and actually look and see, okay, what's wrong with the lateral? Is there an improper connection, such as a yard drain or a sump pump? Uh, it's, it's a little bit difficult trying to figure that stuff out. So we're trying to figure out how we, we can go about doing this. Well, and the other thing I think, you know, to, in the modern subdivisions, there was provisions put in for storm drainage at every house. But the older subdivisions didn't have that requirement. So, you know, probably 80% of the homes in Erie County don't have a place to put sump pump. So, you know, that that's a, to me, that's a huge challenge because we can't just say pump it in your yard because the people are gonna say, I don't want that. I just, every time I cut the grass, my lawnmower's gonna sink, even in August. So we, we gotta come up with a way which defeats the purpose of putting the water in the catch-22. I mean, that's something I think we gotta figure out. We're hoping maybe that there's some people we could work with, you know, that would have the option to discharge it outside of the sanitary sewer. But for people that do have to, they, they don't have another option. They have to continue to discharge the sanitary. Uh, we could give them a few options. So, you know, either remove it from the sewer or we could look at charging a flat rate of $150 a month on top of their bill, or the homeowner could install a flow meter at their expense and then they would be billed on the usage of water that they discharge to the sewer. Um, again, the goal is to remove those sump pumps and that, but there might not be an option. And where'd you get the $150 a month from? Uh, we were kind of looking at different options. It was- How much a sump pump produces? It typically. Typically, it's like a lot of money to me for it is. Pump. But the problem is, if if we have to design our system based off those flows that we we get into the sewer pipes and into the plants, we have to be able to cover that. Uh, we have to upsize the pipes. We have to upsize the plants. We have to cover those expenses. So this was one option of a way to do it. Um, so like we were talking about just a little bit ago, uh, need to check the. We need to check the service laterals for the leaks as well. Um, you know, it's another question of how are we gonna go about doing this? If we find leaks, is it something where we could go in and correct them or is it something that the homeowner would have to face? It's some of the things that we're looking at. Because when we're talking about the service laterals, that's the part from somebody's house to the sewer. That's correct. We're dealing, that's the county deal. It's that stretch right there that needs to be addressed. I think it has to start first with us asking residents to, you know, me, I, I've got a house 15, 16 years old, I never think about that, never thought about it. But I think we have to ask people now to at least think about this. And if you've never thought about it before, take a minute and see if you understand what what's going on with your house. Do you have a sump pump? Okay, where is it actually pumping to? And where are your downspouts connected? Where is that water going? Because, I mean, we have to find a way to fix it. And I think the, if the first step has to be asking people you know and if you see that it's not right if it's doing these things that we're talking about we're, you know we need you to correct that on your own because you know if we ask 100 people and 10 people do something that starts to make a difference so that's exactly right so um, looking forward uh, some of the things that we're looking at doing uh, for 2021 uh, we have to we have to try to start working on the I and I. Uh, EPA is looking at everything objectively. They're saying, okay, what are you guys doing? Uh, we see that you're out looking for things. We have to start <coughs> correcting these issues. So, uh, for for instance, we're looking at spending about five hundred fifty thousand dollars on uh, uh, rehab on the sewer. So that means lining, uh, grouting, that kind of thing. Um, on Lincolnshire area, so it's Pennsylvania, Indiana Ave, Ohio and Michigan Ave. Uh, those are bad areas. Those are the clay pipe that we were discussing. Um, so that's one project we're looking at during 2021. Another one, uh, we're eliminating Metawonga uh, wastewater treatment plant. Uh, we're gonna eliminate the plant and convey flow to the Huron Basin wastewater treatment plant. That's gonna be around a $4.5 million investment. Um, another item, in-house leak repairs, that uh, covers $200,000. That covers our staff going out and actually fixing the leaks ourselves, keeping it internal. 
uh, going out fixing some of the leaks that we can handle ourselves. So like the castings that were shifted or you know deteriorated manholes at the surface, some of the simpler things that we get more bang with our buck. Um, another item, uh, engineering sawmill, sawmill Creek flow direction. Uh, we're looking at having to eliminate uh, Sawmill Creek EPAs. Again, looking at those uh, bypasses that we do at, the, at that treatment plant, they said, you know, you have to expand the plant to hold the capacity or get to the bottom of the I&I. &I, and that's another item that we're looking at, $725,000 for engineering for that. How much? Seven hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. I think we do better than that. So that leads us to the uh, sewer rate increase options. So uh, if you're looking at the chart, uh, the very there's two. Uh, let me go back. There's two areas of sewer system. There's Erie County sewer and Bayview sewer. Um, they both get charged differently, so we have to split them up. Uh, the top of Erie County Sewer shows different rate increases in percentages, and the bottom half of that chart on the top shows uh, EPA fee per account increase. So that's one through five dollars per account. Um, you would add those two numbers to figure out how much overall we would uh, increase or gain with our budget. So for 2021, we were looking at uh, projecting around $7.2 million. And uh, it would add, if we went, say, a 5% increase and a $5 EPA fee, it would uh, add to the budget around about $8 million, $9 million. Or I'm sorry, $800,000 to $900,000. So this money would help us try to start working on these issues, get an I and I eliminated or reduced, that kind of thing. But if you need somewhere between five and thirty million, that doesn't seem like very much money. It's not. Well then how are you gonna do it? It's gonna be hard. But we're looking at other ways we'll get into the water side of it. We're looking at other ways to kind of creatively do this. Uh, to try to get, like I said, more bang for the buck. Uh, I don't know it's kind of a dirty word to go into debt, but I mean, you have to sort of almost have to leverage that money into debt. So. I know, but. Well, we sure don't like doing that. Right. We've worked very hard to go from 120 million to 60 million. <coughs> Correct. I don't want to go back to 120 million. But I, I will say, we're looking at when we start doing these projects. Um, we're looking at, you know, investing smaller portions a year, like say over the next 10 years, we'll try to budget the 5 million or the next five years. Oh, so we can do this over years? We'll try our best to. We'll see if we have to have some discussions with EPA to make sure they would agree with that. But as long as we're working towards that goal to reduce, it should be something that they would. Well, just looking at the numbers too, you mentioned the major projects you <laughs> talked about that we are more than likely going to go through here in 2021. That's about six million dollars. Divide the six million dollars by the number of sewer customers. That's five hundred eighty-six dollars per account that that costs. You divide that by sixty months. If you wanted to say you paid over time, that's nine, ten bucks per month increase to pay just for sewer. those projects. Just to kind of let people understand. The, the scope of what we're talking about. If you paid that five, eight, but that's five hundred eighty-six dollars for every sewer account we have. Five, and how much? Five hundred eighty-six dollars per for six million dollars worth of work that we're doing this year for over five years. No, well, total five hundred eighty-six times ten thousand two hundred and fifty-five. That includes Bayview, but about ten thousand accounts. So you're at five hundred eighty-six dollars a month. That's the value per account holder. But the the average customer, which is, I'm going to guess, in fact, I know this number. I th yeah, and the, there's no account of how much you use yeah, or anything. That's just a straight user. divided yeah, by I know what you're saying. Numbers. But the, the homeowner, which is, how many percent are residential? It's right on here, about 5 CCF. On I mean, how many of the, of the total percentage? Oh, okay. What are the residential folks versus the commercial folks? 
I would think residential would be 80 percent. 80 percent. Okay. So 80 percent of the people, and what you're saying is P. Jackson, who's the finance guy for DOES, the average customer uses five CCF. Yep. And for purposes of t talking, a CCF is 748 gallons of water. So currently, you treat 748 gallons of water or of sewage, rather, for how, how much is it per CCF? Uh, it's uh, $5.79. So 748 gallons of sewage is treated for $5.49. 79. 79. In, in the Erie County District. Okay. That seems reasonable. And so if there's a 1% increase in the rate, that would affect the average five CCF customer at 34 cents a month. Uh, if, if we were to do a 5% increase, it would be a dollar 68 per month. Okay. And then talk a little bit, when you say EPA fee, I know that is, I, I, that's happening everywhere. I know up through Cleveland where we work, um, Every, every city now has an EPA fee. I, I don't know, what, what is that? Is that something they're charging us? So that is a result of the uh, consent decree and regulations in general with state EPA and federal EPA. That is a result of those regulations and helping us try to fund some of these projects and some of these compliance issues that we're trying to correct. And it's the cost of compliance. Exactly. It's the cost of compliance. And it's the way Big Brother is trying to say we're hel they're helping the us, but brother. they're really not. They're just giving us another vehicle to help ourselves. Exactly. So to speak. Well, they say you're out of luck. Either fix it. We're going to find you $50,000 a day. Mm -hmm. Come up or come up with a plan to fix it for $50,000 a day. If you snub your nose at us, then we're going to come down hard on you. It always amazes me that city of Cleveland or Los Angeles or New York is exempt from all this and only the little guys like us are getting the, the full punishment but Cleveland can keep doing it forever because they have the big population that lobbies okay all right then so now you're going to talk about water so water department so with, uh, with water, um, there's, this is a little bit more involved with the uh, infrastructure versus the EPA compliance and that, all those items. Um, so for instance, we'll start with the top. Uh, water towers, we have to go in and sandblast and paint them to keep them from rusting out. Uh, they do develop holes if you just say you just leave them. Uh, they'll actually develop holes and water will spray from you them. have at River Road. Yes, exactly. Or Berlin Heights, we had a hole develop uh, probably so, a hole in a water tower is probably not a good thing it's not <laughs> free shower for <laughs> so for uh, cold river, shower cold shower <laughs> <laughs> for uh, river road tower uh, we're looking at having to spend six hundred thousand uh, dollars Berlin Heights tower three hundred thousand Kelly Road tower five hundred thousand dollars and then again that's to sandblast and paint the tower um, another item, so this does involve some other regulation for the better. Uh, e EPA is saying that, you know, we have to go out and try to, for one, find the lead service lines and then uh, replace them uh, when available or as fast as we can. Uh, so, so that to me was, I, I never knew this until a couple of years ago. Um, and uh, I won't say the name of the street, but it was a house that I knew somebody that lived there and you guys came up and dug up this service line. So off of the uh, main line to the meter, to the pit that's in somebody's yard, back in the day, back in the 70s, which, you know, merely yesterday, was um, we, the, the, the county installed lead pipes 
And I said, well, why in the world would they put in a lead pipe versus a copper pipe? And the answer was, well, the lead was more flexible, it was easier to work with, you know, nobody knew it was bad back in those days. And so we have a bunch, like thousands, of these whips that the EPA has come out and said, you don't want, you don't want that in there. Now we're going to go to somebody's house for free, and we will replace the piece of line that goes from the main line to the meter, dig up the yard, go down, replace it with a piece of copper or plastic, whatever the case, and fix that for free, and we have to do it. It's not an option. But I think morally, we need to do it, because I don't think anybody wants to have their water supplied by lead pipe. <coughs> Back in the day, when before 1954, we were part of the city, we broke apart from the 54, a lot of the areas we're talking about, we inherited from the city of Sandusky. A lot of these lead servers were put in the 54 up to the early 60s. Okay. And after the early 60s, it was galvanized, and then in the 70s, the copper came into play. Oh, okay. A lot of the stuff we inherited, these are the old, the old city lines back 30s, 40s, 50s, early 60s. Now that was a long time ago. <laughs> a long, far time ago. If you ever dig up these lead services, there's like a rattlesnake coil outside the pit. They put that for extra there. There's always a big coil there where that water sits, and that's where you can get the, the high lead concentrations from putting that coil. So you're guessing $500,000, you could go fix them all? We're thinking somewhere around there. Um, Is that with a contractor doing it? That's with uh, us doing it. That's with us going out, using our guys to do it. But since you only got a few guys, what would it cost to have a contractor do it? It would be substantially higher. Well, to me, I think we'll do it right away, in my opinion. Not 10 years. Okay. So, um, yeah, um, the next item, uh, water main replacement. Uh, this is involving, we have some lines in Erie County that we uh, constantly have breaks on. Uh, a main break is where the line would either, uh, you know, split or separate or a bell would fail and water would get out of the main line. So like State Route 101 and Home Gardener, we're looking at $150,000 there. The line is, uh, it's- We're gonna do that. Okay. But, but, well, no, I mean, we talked about this yesterday, but the- Right, right. In that case, these numbers you're giving us are with you guys doing it or contractor doing it? This is with, uh, this would be with us doing it. Again, this is with us using our guys to try to get out there and do it. See, and so what you're, basically telling me these numbers are materials only. Correct. I was gonna say you have to double or triple. Yeah. Or you, if you think about yeah. somebody else doing it. Cause, Cause we have two options, you know, either hire more guys, buy more backhoes and blah, 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 or go out to the private sector and bid it anything over $50,000. Uh, the, the thing I don't like about that idea is Pete over there the, the big Pete is going to say we got to have a drawing done, we got to pay an engineer hundreds of thousands of dollars to design it, and uh, then we got to go out to bid, and then we got to you know uh, that takes six that's that's a year right there in fiddle fiddling around, and um, it's going to take a while and be way more expensive versus you guys going and just doing it. Did I say that right? No. Some Anything of this, add? yeah, some of this you could, but some you're still gonna have to have stamp drawings and you gotta submit to the EPA for a permit to install and it's, that's what they're gonna demand. Even if uh, we're even, not- Yes. Even if we're not moving it, we're not resizing it, we're just replacing it. If you're replacing, you're fine. If you're up to sizing, you have to get that. Right. Uh, that's what I understand. If it's a repair or replacement, you don't. Like in 101, we talked about where, you know, that particular line is under the road, right? Yes. Did I understand that yes. right? Yes. Yeah. 
And when the line breaks, which it's old and junk, when it breaks, we have to go on the state right away, fix it to the state specs. And what you told me the last time you did this, which this happens all the time, just the repaving was $50,000. That's correct. Just to fix the hole, $50,000. That's not counting the materials and the time. To fix that, the lake. To yeah, actually right. fix it. So That's you guys crazy. just thought, because you're smart, said, well, let's get that old junky pipe out from under the road, put a new pipe back outside the road, in other words, bypass it. That you need an engineer to design the, the thing, to submit the plans. That's but correct. But you're going to do the work. Yeah, because that's old 14 inch, and you're going to go find a 16 inch plastic. And, and removing it outside the Outside right the road. See, I, that's the kind of thinking you guys are always doing. And I think, you know, I commend you for that because, you know, that's the new way of doing business of your county. So that, you know, we're going to figure out how to do this ourselves for a lot cheaper. So that $150,000 job would be a $750,000 job if we went through this regular process. You know, and labor, engineering, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So uh, a couple of the other ones, same thing with Strub and Bogart Road. Um, those are older pipes. They we typically have quite a few main breaks per season on those. Uh, so we're going to look at improving those. Uh, same How as, old are those pipes, John? Uh, those. What do you think on Bogart? Um, those. Some of those are fifties. Some of them areas can be thirties. Nineteen thirty. Yeah. I'm guessing that would mean, though, that most of them would probably have to be upsized. It, They're not going to be able yeah. to put the same size yeah. back in. Like Bogart Road, I know we do want to upsize that. Mm -hmm. um, so, Dave, yeah. there's pipes in Erie County that are 90 years old? There's pipes 140 years old. There's pipes that run down here in Columbus Avenue that were built down by the 1880s. That, that are still years working. Years and they work. Yes, they're old cans. It's as old as the building. Yeah. That's amazing. We had a break out on 250 north of um, Oakland Ave. There was a section out there. We looked at the city old records. There was an old milk house dairy there back in the day. It's a two inch leak and put in 1882 or 1893. And we found that. It, that's how old that name is. That is crazy. Huh. Working Village in Milan back in the day, there was some of the guys sit around here, they found them. There was, you dug up the old mains to fix them. There was old, they knew older mains, the old wooden mains. Wow. We found a section of old wooden main they used to have. But that's how they used to fight fires back in the day. They had a wooden main, they had a plug in it, and they had a fire, they pulled the plug out, they filled the hole, and they, that's how they got their water to fight. Hmm. Well. It's a similar thing with Route 60. It's older main. Uh, a lot of main breaks in this a certain section of 60. Uh, we're looking at having to upgrade the meter going over to Vermilion High School. Um, Lake Road, same thing. It's an older line. Uh, a lot of the older lines are duct or cast. Uh, we find a lot of shear breaks on those. Um, additional projects to consider down the road, but within the next near future, probably within the next 10 years, uh, we need to look at Ann Drive, Galloway, Fairview Lane, Woodlawn and DeWitt, Columbus Ave, and certain parts of Columbus Ave, <coughs> Depot Street and uh, Washington Street. Uh, we don't know exactly how much those are going to cost yet, but just different projects that we have a lot of main breaks on. So it's costing a lot of money to go out and fix the asphalt and our time going out there in materials. So Fairview Lanes, for example, huge place, was built in the 50s, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I guess you don't think about it much, but you know those pipes are 70 years old now. Crazy. Time flies. And, and then, they break. And they break. <laughs> And then uh, Berlin Heights, we're going to have to do some work on a pump station for $250,000. Uh, 
Uh, there, it's older. We have to do some upgrades there that are just, it's getting outdated. So as a, as a, um, as a rule, this Fairview Lanes, for instance, what material are those pipes made out of? Those would be yeah, cast. cast. Yeah, cast. And as I remember, you guys uh, telling me that when PVC came out in the, when was it, Dave, the 70s? Yeah, they went from cast to ductile and then eventually transitioned over to plastic. And of course, the plastic was going to last 100 years with very little maintenance. And what, what I didn't, I asked you years ago, I said, I went out on Strub Road, I think. We were by Metal on School there, that guy that breaks all the time right at that bend. And he was complaining, and I went out and looked at it, and I said, you, how in the world does a hole get in the top of this pipe? And you said, the problem, I, I don't know if that was ductile or cast, I think it was cast. The acidity of the soil, depending on where you're at, mixes with this and causes it to degrade? John's a genius here. He explained it. It's like the electrons are moving out of the metal. They're going out of the soil. They're coming out of the metal. We're losing the metal strength as it goes into the soil because of the different charges, right? That's correct. The charges of the soil compared to the charges of the pipe. So, so, so typically now when we put in any kind of a metal fitting in a water line or sewer line, we have to put in a uh, sacrificial anode and basically that draws that electronic charge from the fluid moving through the pipe, draws that charge out of the pipe and it helps reduce that oxidation that happens. It's the same thing as a boat or a ship. It's not so much here because we're in the Great Lakes with fresh water, but you go anywhere else and you see those anodes on the bottoms of boats everywhere. And even some of the tow boats that we have metal boats, we still have them on there because it pits and just starts eating away. And a couple of years ago we went down and to just one of the tow boats, we went to the dock and we looked and we're like, where'd that water come from? There was like six inches of water, the boat was sinking. And we couldn't figure out where the water was coming from. Here was pinholes that were just starting to, to pop up. And we had a pair of brakes so you can, believe it or not, you can put your finger yeah. through the pipe. That's you showed mean. me that. You can literally take mm -hmm. your finger and just push a hole through it. It's just down to nothing. And then a couple feet from that spot, it's rock solid. You know, it's quarter inch steel and it's hard as can be. Yeah. Looks like Brand new. Yeah. Well, we've had that connection or problem with the taps out on B, where you've got a dissimilar metal, mm -hmm. right? You've got a cast saddle with stainless steel bolts, and something's happening chemically, right, on that. It, and literally, you can take the saddle and just push your finger through it. They're they're just they're deteriorated to nothing. Pop off the water and spray. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Sure, question. Okay. I just got a question. So if it's eating through a metal pipe with ions, would it not eat through a plastic pipe too? Um, it doesn't, it will not oxidize plastic. Like metal, it oxidizes, it rusts, yeah. uh, corrodes. Um, so plastic doesn't have that property just being plastic versus like a metal that could oxidize. It's more stable, if you will. So how long would your plastic pipe last? A hundred years? In, well, in theory. Yeah. They're supposed to last on years. In theory. If it's installed right. Correct. <laughs> and of course, the danger of a crack is plastic can crack. Well, we have a lot of that. If it's installed improperly, you will get cracks with rocks and everything else laying on top of it. It'll crack. If or it's done right, it'll last forever, you know, in our time. Or poor pipe quality, material quality, yeah. it could fail. So, so to dumb it down, you dig a trench out of dirt. And if you put the plastic pipe and you just lay it on the, the, the rough surface or the, this kind of surface, irregular, yeah, you know, it, pressures of the earth and movement of the water can break the pipe, no question. We, we see that in District B. But the proper way to do it is to bed it so that there's something cushioning it and it's perfectly straight, perfectly level. So as Mother Earth moves, it's not it's got number eight stones around it, like the sewer pipes, and that keeps it protected. So if it's put in stone on bottom, stone on the top, you know, basically it's... If you're always having movement, like Pat was saying, also you're also having hammering in the system, which can be 
four to five to six times the pressure of normal working pressure. So you get 50 pounds in there, you get a, a hammer system with a problem with a main break or if you touch the valve, it could be over three, 400 pounds in there. The yeah. pressure's going back through your system. Or so you get holes blown and all that stuff too. Somebody slams a hydrant. Somebody slams a hydrant or their firefighters are fighting, they slam too hard. We try to train them on a open to close hydrants. So I assume we have the same how many miles of water pipe? There is over 450 water pipe. 450 miles? It's a lot of district B. Mm -hmm. Pete, how many customers are water customers who don't have sewer? It's not that many. Uh, we have uh, 1350 all in district B. I don't have I guess sewer. And subtract city here and water comes from the ballpark. Yeah. And well, we have sewer only. Probably 3,500 sewer only Huron customers. Um, and maybe a note, maybe a total 25. Uh, I hate to guess. Yeah. Maybe 2,000. Yeah. That, but that's just a That'd be a couple thousand people with septic tanks, <coughs> yeah. roughly. Okay. So this brings us to uh, utility line replacement crew. So <coughs> as we mentioned, we have some aging infrastructure or items that need to be addressed. Uh, we are looking at trying to keep cost to a minimum. And uh, like I said, mentioned earlier, trying to get more dollar or more, more bang for the buck, so to speak. So but this is just a thought process. It's a thought process. You know, elect money, to, money saver over the years if you're in a mess. We do it ourselves. You know. We'd look at hiring uh, three additional qualified workers. Uh, there's some materials there, or equipment items that we would need as well to do this, but it would substantially pay itself off because we wouldn't have to do the uh, XYZ, so to speak, and we would be able to get things done cheaper, but they're done the right way. In a perfect world, if, if this was a thing, how much could you do? You go back a page, could you do everything listed on there, and how long could it take you to do that? Maybe not all of it, I get it, because some of it may be specialized, you might need to do some certain things, but. We could do a substantial portion of Like what? in a year, you could do a six months, a month, two months, how long does it, if you had a crew dedicated to do that, and that's all they did, and they were working for a year, would you, you get half probably, of that list done? Would you? Probably do a lot of that list in a year and then start off with another. You could have another list like that for ten years straight. Right. You probably could get a lot of that done in one year if they were just dedicated to do mm -hmm. the water jobs and the sewer jobs. So that was that kind of mentions the, last, the second part of that. So if we had these guys out there doing this stuff, they could jump over to sewer and fix some of the inflow infiltration leak issues that we're having. Kind of a dual purpose. We could use them for that too. So just a thought. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, water rate increase options. So again, uh, water district A and water district B, two separate areas in the chart. Um, top portion is percentage increase bottom portion is EPA fee per account increase um, and as you guys can see it would be around say we went 5% increase um, it would be around a dollar 46 increase per customer on average per month a month per month and uh, <clears throat> EPA fees if we went say five dollar EPA fee uh, per customer would be about a 17.1% increase that they would see per month. But again, this could generate us $700,000, $800,000 a year additional to our revenue that would help us get these issues fixed. I'm going to 
turn this over to Pete Jackson, our fiscal officer, to explain what this chart is and graph. Okay, what this chart is, is that we buy probably 75% of our water from the city of Sandusky, and we have an agreement with the city for the purchase price of that water. Uh, we got a new uh, contract in 2016. Uh, in 2015, we had paid $1.18 per 100 cubic feet. Then that new rate started off in 2016 for $1.35, and then it's gone up every year, and we're anticipating it being $1.56 this year. And so through those years, we've had those increases. We have not passed on those cost increases to our customers. Uh, towards the bottom of the chart, you can see we purchase about 2 million, 2.2, 2.3 million CCFs a year from the city. And so the numbers right below that is how much additional money we could have collected if we have just would have passed on those increases to our customers. And so for 2021, uh, we just kind of used how much we purchased in 2020, uh, what we would have what it would cost us uh, just this year, we're, we're missing out on about $600,000 on revenue. And through the last six years, uh, we're missing out on about $2.4 million in revenue that we haven't passed those costs on to customers. How much? About $2.4 million. And that's over the five year period? Yeah. Added together. All right, right wait a minute. That's kind of Actually, this is you changed this from last week, so correct. Yeah. So let me just, let me just get that in my brain. So in 2016, we you're telling we paid two hundred forty thousand dollars more for the bulk water than we did in fifteen. In yeah yeah, and the, and the county basically ate that cost. Right. Okay. We just so then paid it, and that was it. That compounds in se seventeen, doesn't it? Or exactly. Not? That's why the numbers go up each year. So the total of, amount in seventeen is an extra twenty grand, from sixteen to seventeen. Okay. And then no, uh, no, yeah, no. It's an extra two hundred sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, because we should. We're missing out on twenty one cents. And so, you know, a four extra cents for the 20 grand, but you know, we should be collecting 21 cents more from that dollar, that original dollar 18 that we haven't passed on. Okay. So that's why the number counts. But you already counted for 17 cents in that first year. Now you're just adding four cents. In I'm, 17. I'm looking easier. Correct. I'm looking at one, we, we bought all the water we needed for 1,970,000 in 15. In 17, it cost us 2,306,000. <laughs> Don't you subtract those two? What? <laughs> in like in 2017, we we water cost us a dollar thirty nine for that first tier, which is probably 80, 85 percent of the water that we purchased for the year. In two, if we would have used 2015 numbers, it would have cost us a dollar eighteen. But instead, in 2017, it cost us twenty one cents more. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the twenty thousand dollars more. We we want to encompass the whole twenty one cents, not just the four cents. That's why it's at two hundred sixty thousand dollars for just that year. <coughs> well, that's why I'm asking. Just that year. Correct. But when you do it, what, mm -hmm. what we're what Steve's saying is, you need the two hundred forty thousand dollars again, don't you? Right. Yep. That's why the cumulus. But, but, but that, that's built into the number. It starts at 240. Yeah. In 17, you start at 240 and you add the 20 to get to 260 for the whole year. That's what I'm saying. Because if you yeah. add up all those big numbers on the bottom, you get 2.4 million. That's all. 20,000, yeah. Yeah. I think that's right. the yearly I understand. increase. Yeah. I and then you add the 16, 17, and 18 was another four cents. So you get the 240 plus the 20 plus the whatever it is. That's all. That's all I was saying. Now you're not compensating yourself 
or you, you can't take into effect you bought a little more water one year versus the other more or less water you, you can't factor that because that's just the way it goes yeah. you know it was a dry summer so right. people watered the lawns more yeah. and maybe you're going to talk about this but maybe explain to folks too when we when we're talking about this we've got a water fund and a sewer fund and we separate things so that water stuff is water stuff sewer stuff is sewer stuff and they've By got law. a and, right, and they've got a balance in there so your sewer rates go to the sewer fund water rate water run simple speaking our system kind of pays for itself mm -hmm. where we are now maybe share with people what the balances are you know what our revenue is per year simple i know we just talked details about this yesterday it'll come out more in the next month <clears throat> but just so folks are understanding because they might see a big number as far as a fund value and go Ooh, well there's millions of dollars but explain again you know how that balance is going down certainly by this much in the last five years that balance has gone down by 2.4 million dollars right because we didn't account for that increase in our cost of doing business but if you're if you're not going to maybe you could just explain a little bit you know here's the fund balance here fund balance here <clears throat> every year we bring in this much and we're spending about that much mm -hmm. and and that's why when we talk about having a six million dollar issue for sewer and close to six million for those projects they talk about for water that's cash that we don't necessarily have so that's why we have to figure out how to, do we build up our reserve even more and pay cash probably can't wait that long so we have to that's why we have to go through that but i think people have to understand that yeah we have that we might have some big numbers in those funds but this is pretty much the biggest part of really county government spending that we have to deal with mm -hmm. is water and sewer right. well the bottom line is to make everybody have all the water they need to drink and all the water they need in their commercial businesses and all the water they need to water their lawns and any agriculture it's costing us six hundred thousand more dollars this year than it did in 2015 that, just to exactly buy the water it. just for us to buy the water that yes that's exactly yeah, that it. doesn't include people anyway, trucks right parts right pieces anything right. just the water run from that pipe to this pipe mm -hmm. yep and the irony is not lost on me and i don't think anybody here that we've got the biggest source of fresh water in the world right here and we have to pay a dollar 56 for that rate it's crazy and, and I know there's people that live Avon Lake. You go east of here, cost of water. It's not that. It's not that. And I, I realize ours goes up because we do have to do these things. But well, it's a it's a volume driven business, just yeah. like the landfill. And I know when we worked with uh, Avon, was it Avon? Back in Edward, you know, the secret was they built a 30 or 36 inch pipe down south and sold, use their facility to sell more water. Because your, your labor stays the same, your debt stays the same, your uh, materials stay the same, but you distribute it over more volume, which drives the cost down. So, you know, we've, we've tapped every resource we can to sell more water to those that want to sell water. But, you know, a lot of people, i.e. Bellevue, for instance, you know, we tried to get them to, you know, buy water through our system. Most of these places that own water plants use it as a revenue stream. And a city can take the money, like whether it be Bellevue, Huron, Sandusky, they are different creature, Pete, jump in here, than Erie County. Erie County, we can't take the water money and go put a sidewalk in or a new public dock. We can't do that, but a city can. So th they make you know millions of dollars generated from water and sewer. We're not in that situation. You know we're basically fighting to keep our head above the water, just to provide the service and fix the problems in the service, and that's kind of where we're we're sitting. And that's a law, right, Pete? State state law. Yeah. Well, I think we've, in detail, went over the problems. I know we have some public here. Do you guys have any questions or anything you want to 
add or I mean anything we can clarify happy to entertain any questions well, you know it's killing us people over 65 you know I just lost my wife in July and I lost a third of my income <clears throat> hell I live out here uh, in Perkins and my water bill was a hundred dollars a month and there was only three of us there I mean it's down now since she's gone but apparently it keeps squeezing us I you know the price of gas all this is going up I mean food I don't know how you people I mean not you people but I don't know how the old government expect, expects us to live I really don't like crazy it's a big deal they give us 10% what's that for a real estate tax and all you know the utilities are going up. I don't know I, mean, I guess if you're a drug dealer you can afford it I don't know but I'm just a retired gentleman and I, and I can't afford it I mean I understand the problem because I put a pot of water lines in the sewer lines <coughs> I don't know what they're going to do. I really don't. Yeah. And I mean, I, I understand what you're going through. And, and you guys have done a really good job. Yeah, I like, you've done a really good job. And I know it's got to come from somewhere, but man, what's it supposed to do? Ma'am? Yeah, we're, you know, it's, it's just a catch-22. And we didn't even talk about District B. We got another problem sitting out there that could be, who knows, you know, to, to repair that. But, um, you know, the thing, we are 100% against, we, we have busted our butts to figure out how to, you know, do things cheaper, do them more efficiently. You know, our DOES guys, you know, I've been doing this 40, 41 years now. I'd put them up against any private crew anywhere. I mean, you know, guys that work for me in the private sector, I would put government workers, which, you know, typically they get a bad rap, but our guys are just a bunch of younger, uh, hardworking, they care, you know, they don't want to do things more expensive. You never see them standing around. I'm talking about DOES. They're just, they're, I can't say enough good about them. And, you know, my first reaction when somebody says they want to buy a backhoe and put the pipes in themselves, I'm going to say, hell no, you know, because I want the jobs to go out to, to the, you know, our folks. But I look at it the other way, it, because of the shortage of labor in the United States, not just Erie County, you know, there are, there's, everybody's busy, you know, construction-wise. I mean, everybody's jammed up. And I think with the new administration coming in, they're going to be even more jammed up. I got a lot of friends in the underground work, road work, underground work. The bids that are coming in this year are never been seen before in the history of their companies. So what's that do? That's going to make the prices go way up because of supply and demand. I mean, you can't, we can't find enough guys to drive the backhoe. That's the problem. There's just not enough skilled workers. You know, I go out on a job site and everybody's gray hair. And there's no kids like this young man that are in our coming up to replace us, you know, as we as we age out. So I, I see it's a huge problem. So if these if you fellas think you can do this and you know, under the leadership of Mr. Moyer there, who's you know, as old as I am, and we're gonna be here what, four more years? We said, that's what you told me. You know, I think we can do some of this work. And these costs they're giving us are materials only. So it doesn't include overhead, doesn't include profit, doesn't include, you know, what I would get if I was bidding it, and, and the labor. So, I mean, these costs, you know, triple probably, you know, when you want to do it. <clears throat> I don't think anybody here has the appetite to raise rates anytime ever you know man I, I scratch my head how do we do this without doing that <clears throat> and I just don't have I mean I, I just don't know how to do it 
to be honest with you, we don't have the cash. I'd love to be able to tell the EPA we're not going to do anything. It's your problem. Uh, I think there's a solution possibly in the city of Sandusky if, if they're budgeting somehow in their citizens to spend $20 million on a new sewer plant. <clears throat> Got to be a way we could work together because I think we can help our friends there if we reduce the inflows. Maybe, maybe there's a way we don't have to build that new sewer plant. To me, that makes the most sense. You know, it seems to me, you know, everything works fine with the volume on a normal day. It only goes awry when when the rain comes or the lake level comes up. You know, they're fighting that down at the city right now because the lake's here and their pipes are here. So all the lake's coming into their leaky pipes now. So we got to figure this out, and, and I know we want to do this together. Um, we're, we're not trying to squander money. We don't want to go more in debt. Um, you know, I've always said this county should have zero debt, my opinion. This is a very well-to-do county. You know, we're so blessed to have the tourism that we have because that pays our sales tax, which is about 50% of our general fund budget. So the problem is we accumulate $120 million of debt at 6 and 7% interest, and we were paying for that for all these years. You know, we worked hard, you know, to get that down. We People say, well, Pat, why don't you pay off the $60 million? Well, you can't. It's bonds. So there's penalties if you pay them off early. So we're kind of stuck. And we looked at it yesterday, 2035, 2040, you know, we'll be long gone and, and the debt will get paid off. If, but you can't pay it off sooner because the bond, there's a penalty, huge millions of dollars penalty. It's impossible. Well, some of it's through the state and they don't let you do it. Let you do it. They don't even let you do it. No, you have no chance at it. So the only solution is don't spend more money. Don't borrow more money. Go ahead. This is always bothering me. I, I retired from construction. But you know, I brought this up. I, I live in Bergen, but I brought this up. Why do you have to go out in the city of Sandusky now? You've got some very intelligent people, the county and the city. Why do you have to go out and get somebody to draw draw this stuff <laughs> up? I mean, th this aggravates me because Aggravates me too. <laughs> Why do you have to? I mean, isn't there a solution to that? So, yeah, there is. So, when I got in this crazy business, um, I said, well, in those days, they were paying a percentage of the project. So, the law says that you have to have a bid. In order to do a bid, the bid has to have a roll of drawings, has to have a book that thick, and you have to send that out to anybody that's interested. Now, in theory, you know, I'm, whoever the genius was that thought of this, in theory, it should work because you should get 20 bids and you should get the best bid and blah, blah, blah. But in, in the engineering world, you can't do that by law. We're a creature of the Statue of Ohio, and you have to get the most qualified bid. And I've always said if I could be the boss of Ohio for one day, that's the first law I'd change. Because the way the law reads right now is engineers, architects, any professionals that you hire have to be most qualified. And the surprising thing is you can't even ask a price. So when we bid this big sewer project, we, you know, we get a book that says how good you are, your firm. These are always big firms because they, they're big firms that make big books. And they become most qualified. And then in the, the law, three people decide who's the most qualified. Once we decide, those three people, whoever they may be, who's the most qualified, then we can bring them into a room, we can close the door, or, or, we, or we could meet them at a restaurant in some cases, and we could decide how much we're going to pay them. Now that's backwards, because the incentive is for the guy that's drawing it Whose line is whose butt is on the line? The incentive is for him to design it with gold plating on it, 
should last you know should be gold pipes because the more it cost if he's getting paid say eight percent nine percent to do the job let's design it bigger so it costs more i get more money you know architects engineers whatever the case now not saying they're on ethical not saying they would do that but if your stamp was on something and it took a twelve inch beam i probably put a sixteen inch beam i'm not paying for it that's you know that's kind of the theory well that applies to pipes and sewers and so on and so forth then we're going to pay that same guy this is back in the day the same firm to come in and inspect it so we're gonna, they're going to watch us put it in so if there's a problem out in the job and the inspector is the guy that drew it do you think like we end up paying the change order I, I probably so what we've done since then is we've said we got to figure out a way that we can control the cost of the project and that we can co control the cost of the engineering and how we do that my opinion and i think these guys agree is we don't have a uh i'm trying to say this so it doesn't offend anybody but we don't have a quote unquote engineer on staff we have guys in work boots you know guys that have put this stuff in the ground you know mr moyer there forgot more about the water pipes in erie county than I'll ever know and probably anybody else is going to know so we got a guy like that that knows you ask him where the shutoff is on Strub Road for blankety blank and he knows Dave went out and recruited a bunch of other guys like that that know who then went out and recruited a bunch of guys like John Rufo a young guy with a good attitude and you know is not afraid to go down and shovel dirt and that's the way we're going to make this work cheaper than you know going out and just carte blanche you know hiring this engineer designing gold plated three times the cost so you know i i take my hat off to these guys you know for caring because that's what it's about you know we're all living in this little town you know i got a bunch of crap in the ground 60 70 years old that we got to fix and you know my money says let's figure out how to do it keep, you know keep the we're not going to spend 30 million dollars tell you that right now because we don't have it but but i think we, we we really need to find as i told you guys the smoking gun where's the big thing that's you know let's find five big things and fix those so does that answer your question i mean we're we're, we're trying through through brain power of our own versus letting somebody go carte blanche at 12 percent and letting them design it and make it real expensive yeah i understand i just i'm not 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 you guys at all i'm just not happy the way well they write these damn laws i mean they're you're right the i laws. got a, a daughter oldest daughter which 57 i don't know and i got two grandsons and they're all engineers and they're very intelligent. I have a son that's an architect. So. Well, there you go. But I mean, they're intelligent. I, I don't care for the, I don't, just like this guy here, he knows his stuff. Maybe you don't have a college degree, but you know what? The working man, the person out there working with their hands, that's the ones that you want to go to. Yeah. It's like if a doctor writes me a prescription, you know where I go? I go to the pharmacist and I ask him, what is this is this good for because the pharmacist works with it the doctor you know you might get a little kickback i'm not saying you do but <clears throat> you know yeah i don't know Pat. you know your dad was good at what he did too but yeah. I, I just i don't know maybe it'd be farther ahead to put an engineer on staff we we well we had one if you remember yeah and you know the the, the problem is in the political world i know this is on the record but in the political world you have three well-meaning people sitting up here that you know we, we all try but i think steve would be the first one to tell you that he's probably never installed a sewer pipe that's correct <laughs> yes uh, so we rely on somebody and if the somebody gives you uh, the wrong advice we're probably going to go with what our expert says, right? Because that's our guy. Yeah. 
So I think, you know, what we've sort of taken the attitude is instead of just hiring a guy, paying him, you know, $120,000 a year to be our quote unquote engineer, you know, we've said, well, we already own these people. You know, you can't get rid of Moyer because, you know, he's got to run the crews and the blah, blah, to get the pipes running. You can't get rid of Howard, the guy that runs the pump stations. I went to school with him. You know, you have a pump station quit in Fairview Lanes, and you're going to have sewage flowing into Pete's house. So, I mean, those, those years of guys have been working with this for, you know, 30 years now. Well, let's go to them and ask them, how, how do we do this? You know, and then with that knowledge, now we go to the engineer that we got to do by law, and we say, look, here's what we want to do. Not what you want to do. Here's what we think the solution is. And, you know, we figured out how to help these, I shouldn't say we, these guys have figured out on like the Plumbrook uh, or High Dam pump station, huge pipes pumping sewage. Two going to the city, two going to Sawmill Creek. These guys figured out how to help our friends at the city of Sandusky by diverting flow to Sawmill Creek. Could have been done years ago, but you know they didn't. But they figured out how can we send less flow down to the city which helps those guys on their overflows. And, you know, it's been, made a huge difference. We've got another plan with the interceptor that they ran through Menards that we can divert more flow to help our friends at the city. And again, that's where I think the solution is with the city is, you know, how can the county and the city work together? Because we both got the problem. We both live on Lake Erie. How do we figure out how to make that, uh, fix these leaks cheap as we can and and uh, and do it so that we don't have to build another sewer plant. Because to me, that's stupid. That's just treating the problem. But Dave, problem is, uh, like you said earlier, we're a region five where you got a CPA. Ch Chicago's, the Cleveland's, the Detroit's, the Buffalo's. They can all they can, this can all dump into the lake, the lakes, and no consequences right now. It's a small system like us to attack it first. My question to you as CPA was, how can you attack them first, let them resolve what they're gonna do, and then we can work on ours later, because they're, they're 100 to 500 times our problem every day. Yeah. And their answer was, uh, we can't really get in there right now, it's political, we know that. Yeah. They have more votes there and all that, and um, that's the problem. And the Ohio EPA is the same way, I said the same thing to anybody, is there any, you want us to do this, is there any money for us to help our citizens? So we don't raise the rates. There's no basically any grants to help us out from them personally, which would help you know alleviate these costs. And the problem is they're more. And they told me they're more about enforcement now than, than assistance. And now with this current administration coming to Washington, I think we're going to even get stronger on that. Unfortunately, I think we're going to go the other direction. So. But there may be money Hopefully coming from the new administration. Money to fix this stuff now. So we were talking about this yesterday at our budget hearing. You know, we need to get our oars in the water today because I don't think you're never gonna see a time in America's history when you're gonna have more money being printed to fix infrastructure. And I think now's, now's the time to you know, make our move. And, and you know, we just got the grant on Mittawonga, it's 0% for 40 years, wasn't it? We took a $450,000 a year payment and knocked it down to 125,000. Something like that. 125,000 because it's zero interest and instead of 20 years, it's 40 year AM. And you know we're gonna be able to eliminate that Mittawonga piece of junk uh, pump station that literally had two by eight wooden rafters on the ceiling that would have cost millions and millions of dollars to rebuild. And we're gonna be able to it was a little sewer plant. It was a little baby sewer plant. I mean, you know, violations up the wazoo forever and ever. Sewage dumping right into the creek right there. I mean, it was a mess. We can put a pump station there and run brand new pipes and put another empty pipe next to the pipe that's going to work on the force main so that we got it for future in case anything develops along Vermilion, which adds to our tax base. And we're going to be able to do that now and pay for it for $125,000 a year. 
Now that's that's the way we're thinking. Uh, that's a bargain. There may be more bargains out here, you know. And I, I for one, I, I think we talked about. Man, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic right now. You know, a lot of people are hurting, and is now the the right time to do it. Um, and you know, maybe today, January twentieth, isn't. But it's got to be done sometime. You know, like we talk, like Matt, you, you got to rip the band-aid someday. You can't absorb. Two million four hundred thousand dollars is is not going to work. And one final thought is: there was a guy that worked at the EPA years ago. His name was Rick Zuzak, and he was engin engineer or some some guy from the EPA. He was a big shot. And back when they weren't going to let us tap Timberlake, no more moratorium on sewer taps. So I called this guy up, and I was yelling at him, complaining, and and he says, "Can I ask you a question?" I said, yeah. What do you pay for your cable? And I told him, and, I, and I, you know, this is 20 years, 30 years ago, and he says, he says, what do you pay for your water? And I told him, and he says, now which one do you think is more important, HBO or your water? I said, well, my water. He says, you're getting a bargain. You know, and you, and you think about it in that perspective, and I don't want to belittle it, but you know, you're buying 748 gallons of water for $5.50. Only in America could that happen. And then we're gonna treat your your sewage that comes out of your toilet for, what'd you say, $5? Yep, dollars I mean, when you look at it versus HBO, it's a bargain. You know, it's, it's like really cheap. And like I said, it, it, that doesn't sound right, but you know, it kind of puts it in perspective. And I've always advocated, and I'll still advocate, and I don't know what these fellas would vote on, but I've always said to myself 12 years ago, if we'd have tied your water and sewer 12 years ago to CPI, just tie it to whatever inflation is in the United States, if it's 6%, if it's 1%, if it's 2%, whatever the case is, if we'd have just said 12 years ago, just tie it to CPI. You get an increase every year. You don't have to have these hearings, and politicians won't do it because they think water rates and sewers like Social Security, and if you fool with Social Security, you're going to be voted out of office. I said, I don't care. Get it done so that you wouldn't be having this discussion today. But I can't give these guys a 2% increase in the union contracts. You know what two by fours have cost now? Or half inch plywood went from $8 a sheet to $24 a sheet in six months. You can't just absorb it. There's no money to do that. And I, I think that if we'd have done that back in the day, probably wouldn't even be having this discussion. But you got to have the political will to do it. You got to be able to face the people and say, you know, we think you elected us. This is the right thing. If you don't like it, get us out of office. So, but I know every one of these guys does not want to raise taxes or we don't want to raise water rates. We don't want to do anything. We want to leave it just the way it is. And Matt? No, I mean, I think, I mean, the put a point on this and end this conversation you know the EPA has come through and said you guys have to do these things we've worked with them we've held it off for several years now and we've held off the increases for several years and we're just in the position where I think we're gonna we have to do something well, why don't you do it right now then because the cost to live is going up like bad like I would do it I don't know yeah yeah but I'll just stay up to I can eat off paper plates no but anyway, yeah, I, I do it now because you don't know what it's going to cost next year, the year after. Yeah. I know everybody's pandemic's got everybody scared to raise it. Got to do it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming in. We appreciate it. Thank yeah. Thanks thank for thank John and Pete and Dave. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, you thanks guys. for coming in. Thanks yeah. for listening, talking to us. And if you have any questions or concerns moving forward,
give us a call, send us an email, reach out to us. Because we want to hear from you. And whether it's an idea or something or just your thoughts, I mean, that's what we want to do. I make a motion we take a five minute recess. Second. Yes. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Can I go? Yes. All right, so we're going to uh, take two. Okay, we are not. So we're back on the record, and we have a retirement from one of our finest employees, Matt Cross. Oh. <laughs> I, I have no idea why somebody would hire after 29 years instead of 30. I don't get that. You guys are pushing me out. No. <laughs> No way. I, you know, car guys are always dear to my heart. I would have never thought about leaving now if it wasn't for this two-year bio. When I sat down and crunched it, there was no way I couldn't take it. I would have worked, I'm 57. My plan was to work until 60 at least. I would have never thought of this. And I bet you guys wouldn't have, if you were at the position now, versus when you came out with this. Like I talked to Matt. Yeah. You didn't know this federal money was gonna come pouring in. No, you, we well, you would have had to work even two more years. You would have worked for, have to work for four more years, right? right. Yeah. I would have had to work four more years if I didn't take this to be equal what I'm getting now. Yeah. The only difference is, is the retirement has two sides, the medical side and the financial side. If I couldn't jump on my wife's insurance, that would have been a consideration also. Because mm -hmm. I can't go on the insurance side until I turn age 60. Because I did not finish 31 years. Yeah, that's what I was wondering about. Yeah. But I'm in a good position. My house is paid off. I've got full time work waiting for me. You know, I'm going to, this has been a real struggle for me for the last couple of months leaving here. Oh, I'm sure. It really has. You're like a fixture. <laughs> It's been a great job. I'll tell you the guy who's going to miss you the most, Sheriff Ziggy. I love Ziggy. He loves you. The, <laughs> yeah. the best sheriff you will ever have here. Yeah. Well, you've kept all his stuff running and you know kept him happy. We do things for him that you guys don't know we do. Yeah. <laughs> and some of it. Yeah, I walked into it the other day with him. <laughs> yeah. He came walking in to see me. Are we on the record? Can I talk? Yeah, about we're on the record. Now? Yeah. Sure. Well, anyway, there were two detectives. He came in with a question. Two detectives and a car that was confiscated that they had warrants for, and we were looking for the methamphetamine. We had the car tore apart. We don't ever charge for that. We don't want that anywhere on the books, anything like that. We've taken bullets out of cars. I've taken black boxes out of fatals. We've done a lot for them that nobody needs to know. You know, most of the times when we do something like that, the doors are closed and they're locked. We don't need any citizen walking in and seeing anything like that. Yeah. It's been interesting, it's been fun. You know, we take care of the boat now, we take care of the Bearcat now. It's just, it's been a great job. I don't know if you guys have ever heard it, I tell every new guy my same speech, Matt knows what it is. Three things, and you guys should make this in a plaque and put it up. Three things to be a success at Erie County. Lay low and get the work done. Don't use your sick time for vacation and de get in deferred comp. You do those three things, you're gonna be a success at Erie County. Uh, that's good advice. Well, here's your certificate. I think they wanna get a picture. Are we allowed to do this? Oh, come on. You got your mask. Uh, Give me a hug. Right? Yeah. We're not socially distancing it later. Tell him smiling. Yeah, yeah right. right. <laughs> Matt Cross is all smiles. That's how it's going to read. <laughs> I went to church Sunday. I said, why did I not have a shave? Right? Yeah, right? Exactly. Right? Hey, there you go. Forget it. Who's going to see it? Yeah. Well, you got to be. Well, if you do it that way. But I've seen the guy oh, no. with this mask with a beard. No, come on. That that's that's why we're in the game. <laughs> right? Thanks, everybody. Hey, Thanks, man. Really yeah. has. Thank you for everything. Fantastic job. Much appreciated. You know, I really, really enjoyed it.
Yeah. You've enjoyed it. You haven't here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You're welcome to stick around for the next one. <laughs> that was the short part of the meeting. I explained to Roger, it only took five minutes. <laughs> All right, Mr. Daniel. Uh, I'm going to turn this over to Hank. Mr. Hank. We have uh, one item to update the board on is the uh, January sales tax receipt came in. Hmm. Last January, uh, a little bit better than what we received in 2018 and 2019. But um, uh, do I have that in your box? Probably. Have it in your box. Uh, oh. I can give you mine if you want. No. Yeah, hi. Oh, I believe you. <laughs> I don't think you would read it wrong, would you? <laughs> so you ended the year 124. No, no, no. That's the new year. That's remember, and that's yeah. the top line is comparing to the actual from last year. Oh, I top see. Top, okay. top section has, is but the budget article. is right on the bottom part. And then the bottom part is the budget, the current year. They nailed the budget, as they usually do. Not, not exactly a good start to the sales tax year. Again, the January for October sales. And then for 2021, we're looking at a 3% decrease from last year. Even. So no improvement. And we were down, what, six, about six, six and yeah. change yep. last year. Yep. And then another three this yep. year. Mm -hmm. so well, to do, to do what we did last year, according to this sheet, if I'm reading it right, it says we're going to be down $1.8 million. Roughly. Is that right? No, we're going to be. You mean from 19? Yeah. Yeah. 16.273. And they think we're going to be at 14.795. Oh, I was looking. I'm reading the long sheet. He's looking at the big budget sheet. Oh, I'm, I'm looking the at the sales. Project sheet. right now with those numbers. Oh, you're skipping ahead. Yeah, I was just I was just referencing ahead. I'm not fully, down, Tiger. I'm not We're fully still on skipping. sales tax. <laughs> oh, I still have correspondence here before we get into the fun part. So the bottom line is your your fourteen seven nine five is what you think. Yeah, I mean I mean we're hearing about more stimulus. Hadn't happened, so we didn't figure that in. Plus we think that's already taken its course. Um, who knows what what the summer tourist season is going to look like. I mean, they're trying to roll out that vaccine, but I mean, what, uh, for the first tranche for the public, the over 80 year old folks, you, know, you got 400 and some thousand in Ohio, and Ohio got 100,000 uh, vaccines. So, how long is that going to take to vaccine everybody where they can produce enough? I mean, who knows? My mom's on the list. She's over the 80. She's, we signed her up over the weekend. <coughs> Crickets. Haven't heard a thing yet. Right. Okay. Thanks. So now we're going to do. Well, hang on. I got a letter here. You got a what? I have a letter. Letter. Uh, we got correspondence from the county engineer. I think he wants something cleared up. It says Dear commissioners, I have composed a letter detailing inaccuracies, unfounded statements, pure nonsense, half truths, and various innuendos made by the commissioners and or their administrator as depicted in the meeting minutes of November 23rd and November 25th. Having learned over the years to sleep on such commentary and think about it rather than letting my emotions control me with a knee-jerk reaction, something that some of you should learn to do, I am not sending it. Even as constructive criticism is not welcome in your domain, that letter would not be representative of my professional position as your county engineer. That being said, I do want to clear up one thing which is bold, self-explanatory, if bold, each of you will simply take the time to look. Look at the attachment, which is a receipt from the United States Postal Service for $19.20. Of 
quote, taxpayer, end quote, monies were bold not used to send the reference correspondence. My bold monies were used and neither were they expensed. So I'm suspecting I made a comment in a meeting saying that I didn't think taxpayer money should be sent on certified mail mailing letters to my home and each of you at your homes. The engineer wants me to correct the record that it was not taxpayer money that he did pay for it out of his own pocket. I do, however, still feel it is ridiculous to send me letters at my home when we have free inner office correspondence and email. So the Mr. I was reading some the the misrepresentations and in innuendos were about the nineteen dollars. Uh, inaccuracies, unfounded statements, pure nonsense, half truth, various innuendos. That was over the nineteen dollars. I'm guessing. Hmm. He did. That was the thing. He does want to clear up because it is self-explanatory. Yeah. Well, I, evidently, if he paid for it, you were wrong, sir, so. I apologize. I owe him an apology. I'm, I'm apologizing on the record. Maybe Pete, did, did you have anything to do with this, too, or? Not that I'm aware of. All right, well, there you go. I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't look at the meeting minutes for the dates he had listed, so I'm not sure what he's referring to other than I know we did have that discussion about it, him cert sending certified letters to you guys individually. All right, well, let's try and be a little more considerate. Very good. I'm not going to show anybody else that new snowplow. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saving for the when the timing is right? <laughs> I, you know, I wasn't quite sure. Maybe that's considered unprofessional. But um, you never know. Hey, we have a long sheet. The green ones we're going to be talking about. The white ones, I think we've pretty much uh, feel they're well, not, maybe not 100% resolved since the clerk of courts does have a personnel thing hanging out there, but. Um, and then Melissa put in the extra 500 for capital needs. So that's the quick on the uh, long sheet. We will be not talking directly about the mandated share and children's services contributions, but when we get into the job and family services budget, remind me to bring up those two numbers. <clears throat> Your first page after the long sheet is finance. Um, well, let's jump back a second. Commissioner Old had a question about this long sheet. Oh, okay. So I think, Mary, your question is, so this is where the general fund sits as of right now. Correct. Um, it's still tentative. I will tell you, I, I briefed you guys earlier about that revenue certification number. Um, I said it was closer to $30 million. It's now going to be dropping down a little bit. It's going to be probably closer um, to about 29.7 or 8. So it's about a $600,000 difference. It's still roughly, you know, if you put in these expense numbers, it's about a $1.2 million, $1.3 million deficit. But it's, it's uh, early on. We uh, still uh, got a lot of data to go through. So where's the 29392 come from? That That is the current legal number from the Budget Commission. Oh, you just said it was. <coughs> 29.8. Well, we're working on uh, new estimates. That is. From that. Is it the Budget Commission? Well, we're going to submit new information to the Budget Commission and ask them to recertify. We do this all the time. So, again, that's the legal number that we've got to work with right now. That's the certification. We, we're working on revising the estimates and asking for a new one. So, we're, we'll be. really, we're about 600000 in the hole. Uh, no, about one point two. One point two. Oh, 1 .2. Oh. Yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. So you don't think it's it's the budget commission? It's not going to be twenty nine three nine two. It's going to be twenty nine seven somewhere in that neighborhood. Okay. Okay. 
the only thing we've certified to the budget commission so far is the cash balances and that we don't use we just use current revenue a lot of counties do use it but we prefer not to, not to because we think that's a bad financial practice <clears throat> you know it's legal but it's a bad practice Page one. Yep. Finance. What happened there is a change in health insurance. Salaries are the same as 20, and uh, there's no uh, one time payments, no workers' comp. But when you go from no insurance to a family plan, it's what you see in a department of four people. So. Okay. County auditor. Um, was given a few tweaks because of the I think the perception was John do you have a copy of this yes, I do. okay the number under the 20 budget for wages and fringes their in tape interpretation I think was in the auditor's office that that number was kind of like etched in stone I felt because I was aware of some things that had changed in the course of the year I was at liberty to make those changes can see the revised and then along with the the contract cost for the audit it's it's difficult to change that number so yeah I mean for 21 you actually have a smaller number than last year when that number really all it does is go up so I don't think that's sufficient that was the that's the number they gave you I had done some calculations uh, was working with Hank and then I, I think I interpreted correctly Hank if I'm wrong I you know on the audit cost? Yeah. Yeah that's the number. That's the number they gave us. Okay. Well you know it might be because they had a um, Yeah last year they had that big they had an extra fee because we had something new in there. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. They had some add ons or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, real estate is not part of the general fund, but part of their program. Uh, they are not saying they will necessarily stay at these numbers. I guess they have a few things in, in the works, and it's a triennial, so there's some things in the works. It, it, it may result in an increase. It may not. We They just don't know. So they're, they're just telling us. But I think if you look at the <coughs> bottom corner in terms of based on 20's actual revenues, it's it, for them to be within their current revenues. I think they're I think it's reasonable at this point. But if it if there's any major changes, that those numbers will make you aware. Why is the revenues six hundred thousand dollars higher? The original 21 is the tax budget numbers which oh standalone funds we throw it out there because it's part of the certification process but it's really more really times than not a really good number it's just kind of a i keep hearing that for years now what well, so why do we even give it to us well it, for standalone funds it seems to be part of the information that you should look at but we we do not use it elsewhere in terms of expenses or in the general fund operations. Well, who's the genius that came up and said it's going to be three million dollars? That's the tax commission. What do you mean three million? That's the budget. That's the and total. What that's number the total, total revenue? Well, there, there's no. Oh, to, that's the fund balance and the revenue. Yeah. No, but it, the actual is two million four fifty six. I never really look at fund balance other than is it going up or down. So you're saying the fund balance doesn't matter? Just like we do in the general fund, we just look at the total rev or the revenues that are coming in. That's the revenue line versus the expenditures that are going out. We don't really take a look at here, use the fund balance and add that to the revenues. We try not to do that. Even though that is the legal formula, but we try not to do that. In other words, we're trying to match revenues to expenses. I know. I mean, I'm not trying to make you sound like a broken record, but you are, because you tell me this every year. But again, why do you have 
Where does the three million thirty two thousand two eighty seven number come from? Comes from a one million three hundred eighty two thousand dollar fund balance and one million six hundred forty nine thousand dollars worth of revenues. Oh, I see. Where does that so the budget the tax budget says one point six four nine million in revenues, but their actuals were one point four let's say one point five, which yeah. is pretty historically accurate. But then why did you budget one point seven last year for revenues? Why did they suspect it was going to be one point seven and it comes in at one point five, which it does every single year, but this year it goes down to what I guess we it actually looked. gone down from from nineteen, which is a pretty darn unusual. Well, that's but, what I'm that's what I'm asking. But it went down yeah. under alternate A too. Yeah, I know that's really unusual. Well, that's why that that's what I was questioning. We can give you some details that show where the actual changes occurred, but I mean, is that tied to that's one that they like to do on them on their own. Yeah. I just, I mean, just curious. Is I mean, you do it on your own, but our job should always be to take a look at it and verify, say, if it's a valid number or not. I'm not so well, sure if you look that's at a valid the, number. The budget to actual last year, the revenue was up 200, and the expenditure was up 200. Almost looks like an exact amount compared to the actual <clears throat> in 20. So whatever looks like it was a <clears throat> assumption that didn't happen. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, it might might be because I'm pretty sure it would. Maybe they have finally broken that piece out about the. Uh, oh, the GIS piece. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, the. Uh, the mapping that they do for all the subdivisions and that kind of stuff, all those geographic information systems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Moved but, it to the GIS. Well, yeah, because you have that GIS group and they put yeah. their their fees in here and huh. they're supposed to break it out. Okay. That, that might have something to do with it. Okay. Family court. This one is. Um, I was hearing things about the reclaim, which is one of their grant. I call it a grant. It's a separate fund. And they were saying they were going to put in a request. And I said, well, you know, when you get these other funds, it's part of the resolution of acceptance that if something happens <coughs> to get money drying up, don't be looking to put people back into general fund. Well, then they come along and they take their 2020 budget and decrease it, and they're accomplishing what they want to do with their separate fund. And one of their quotes in the course of discussion was, it's cheaper to mediate children cases than it is to run it through a magistrate. And so in their interpretation of the thing, if and we met with the judge and Julie, Hank, and I. And uh, I think they feel they, they're making some concessions in the general fund, but they feel it's more important to keep those programs alive this way than to abandon them and then increase the family court docket and have to get into more lawyers. Where is that reflected on the sheet? Yeah. It's in the uh, personnel. So no. salary and benefits. Not under, you said that they're going to mediation, which doesn't that mean an outside person under services? They have people, staff that are, that meet with these. That do the mediation. So they want to move. Really? Yeah. Personnel costs from. Reclaim. 23010, which is a separate fund outside of the general fund. They want to move those costs into their family court budget. 10, 100, 2400, and they highlighted some positions on their payroll worksheet. And are, not, they, are they pulling money out of their 23? Yes, they're expecting that to. So they're moving money from their special fund into the general fund? No. They're just wanting us to absorb the, the, the cost the that fund. we're getting paid out of that separate fund would be now paid in the general fund. 
But where do I, where do you see that? Well, you don't typically see that in the detail that we give you. But if you want to see a payroll worksheet, we've got one. They've highlighted the positions, and those positions are being basically added to their general fund payroll costs. But they're showing to us that the actual dollars and cents are what's on this page here. Yes, this and that's why they're family saying court positive. judicial page is the budget summary that you folks would normally see. Okay, okay. so l let me, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously missed something. 2189964 that is his actual expenditure on salary and benefits. And 20. He's wanting 2276 Right. So roughly $100,000 more, or but about 75000 less than what was budgeted for twenty. Yeah, because remember we that is the policy. That's what a lot of folks have been doing when they've said we're going to accept our 2020 budget as our 21 budget, and That's we're not true. going to meet with finance and go through all the so many of so these. So did he eliminate two or how many positions are moving from the special fund into the general fund? I believe there's three. So three, did he eliminate three, three general fund positions that he wants to? He's doing without things that he had asked for. I think a, the uh, yeah, the essentially. That, I mean, that's he, he had had a replacement for God. I, I hate to really say the guy. Proto. Well, that he was supposed to come back part time. Out. Okay. He enjoyed uh, retirement. Okay, this is years and years ago. Um, Chris. Darn it. His last name. It's all right. But full time position. He was a full time. He was like a, he was their, he was like their main mediator person. And he was like paid half out of that um, reclaim separate fund and half out of the general fund. And when he passed away, they've never replaced him. Yeah. And but it's been kept in the budget. So he's Perrin. letting that go. Chris okay. Perrin. Chris Perrin. Perrin. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So that can think at least two things. Well, and with the size of their general fund, no bonuses and no workers' comp is a good chunk. I mean, well, but that, I mean, the no workers' comp is just a, that's not real. I mean, that's not sustainable. I understand. I mean, it, it's, we took it out, so we, I'm, it, I wasn't expecting to see this. I was expecting to see, say, a $2 million budget that was going to go up to 2.2 .2 or something. I wasn't expecting them to see or request their budget to actually go down with all the changes right. they discussed. But bottom line, yeah. if what you said, or what we said, I should say you said, we said, is you're going to, maybe that's why I'm missing this, Pete, is are we doing the 2019 budget? <laughs> well, we don't have 19 budget. We have its actual numbers. Or actual. Yeah, I mean, take a look at uh, just uh, th that'll give you a real good clue. Just yeah. looking at look at 19, which is roughly 2.1, and then 20's budget was 2.350. That's what I'm getting at. So an extra quarter million dollars. So you know, I'm confused. Really, only spent a hundred thousand of that from actual 19 to actual 20 right right yeah so, so that, we, he can afford what we to told everybody was work off your budget and proved budget from last year 2020 yeah but if you let's go back to what we said in 20 we said we're going to hold you at 19. yeah but that doesn't matter we approved that budget in 2020 and, and, and we, we told everybody if you want to just sign the paper and we're done at uh, 19. No, no, on 20. For 21. For this year, right. we would accept the 20 budget. Yes. Well, I'm not sure that was very smart because, no. you know, I want to back up one more year. We said, right. pandemic's here. We're going to give you the same amount of money you had in 19, and everybody said, okay. Right. Right? I got the impression that we were saying budget of 20, which we approved last year at this time. It was time. the same as the number in 19. Yeah, but... This sounds oh, like because the, pee under the budget the here, <laughs> but, and this is where I'll give no, the judge credit. I mean, he, Matt, yeah, he looked at the number. Increases. He looked at the number of the budget of two thirty, two three fifty, and he figured out a way to do his thing and give us a number that was less than that budget, 
No, the budget was 2093 in 19. The actual, I 20. should say. I'm not yeah. looking at 19. I know. But somehow. We approved that budget. You got $250,000 more money in 20. Yeah, because if you look, I guarantee if you look at his 19 budget, it's probably comparable to his 20 budget. But he came in and said, I'm not going to replace these people. So we approved the budget up here, but the actual is down here. Now, what we are thinking was, okay, you're going to get your actual. But that's not really what we said. We said you're going to get your budget, which we approved. And now people are taking advantage of that and saying, okay, yep, no problem. If, if you had this situation where you had open positions and we allowed for the open position, even though that money was returned to the general fund at the end of the year, in, in this case, it's still in the budget. We should have we should have said different language. Our intent was, you're getting what you got last year. The government functioned perfectly well last year. It'll function perfectly well again this year, yep. regardless of what your budget. Let me let me throw a little twist into the 2020 actual numbers and salaries and benefits. There was that additional $750 bonus thrown in there that. Um, we had never planned on. So that's part of that number of the actual. And that's probably a, a, no. a decent number in his. For, in his, yeah, that's yeah. a decent well, number. It, it is a decent number. It's the difference of 2,093,000 to 2,189,000. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. I mean, we had already put in a 2% increase and a $500 bonus. But, but in the actual, you paid out 2,189,000 in 2000. That's what you paid out. Right, that's true. And that's, 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 and that's with the additional $750. Exactly, it's all in there. So what I'm saying is, I got no problem with two million one eighty nine nine fifty four, what he spent, mm -hmm. all right? Because we made a concession or whatever. But I'm not sure it's fair to take the $2,350,000 budget, which wasn't reality in 19, well, it'd be interesting to look at the number because I bet it was probably pretty close to that in nineteen. Yeah, I bet it was because because he this is a, he has got he this is kind of ongoing. His budget is usually considerably higher than what he actually spends. I agree. Yeah, Rob's a great steward of yeah of the taxpayer dollars. Right, but but I'm not sure it makes sense to just increase the budget when I think the the philosophy, and I, I bet you it's going to haunt us as we go through this further. The philosophy was just what Matt said. 2019, that's, we're going to give you the same amount of money. Everybody said, okay. And now we're here in 21. We're saying, can you do it for the same amount of money? And now we're saying, no, we're going to go by the budget, not the actual. Well, the budget's but, higher. Yeah, but I'm, we're changing the, you're changing the goalpost on them now. I don't think we can change. It's already in policy. That's been a policy for months. And we told them we're going to go off the budget of 20. Now, I agree with you. I mean, it's what you're semantic, saying makes sense. Though. Yeah, it's semantics. But it is what it is. We and should. Have, so you're saying we should change the word from budget to actual? No, I'm what? saying we shouldn't. Well, in or theory, yeah. Hybrid, but we, some, or some hybrid. <clears throat> if you change it now, that's going to unleash... Well, to be honest, when people have asked me, I said, until we approve a budget. Sure. <coughs> well, it's ultimately our decision anyway. I get that. We've had to change the policy. Yeah, the policies like three times last year because we went Medicaid through Medicaid managed realized, care. Remember oh, that been... situation? We were going along approving budgets, and then all of a sudden we had to put the emergency brake on, and we had to go back, and we revised our revenue estimates. So, I mean, we can do that. Did that it's, last year, too. Yeah. I mean, we've had to do yeah, that. After we went through the whole process. Where we've reverted from budget to budget to budget based on actuals. So, but I, well, I just you know, the know next that one. As yeah, things stand today, I think we. The, the next line item is even more glaring. Is 154, you only spent 116, now it gets 154 hmm. back. <clears throat> I, I do think this is a elected department with people that they won't spend the money if they don't really need it and I think they understood the impact of the pandemic and I think they stuck to their guns and didn't just go out and well we got money I'm going to lose it if I don't spend it we'll go down one more line what's what accounts for the increase there you went from 35 and 18 to 66 in services in 20 right 
What is there some simple answer? That's well, where I thought the magistrate answers they move money from supplies down in the services. That appears to be true. No, it, at the top of my head, I can't recall. You can do that. But if we approve it, sure. Usually we don't mess yeah, around with look, those two. Yeah, because look, it's all if you add the two together, it's about the same. Yeah, we don't mess around with those two too much. <clears throat> I'm wondering if he did he say anything about drug testing, anything like that? Because he may have moved moved yeah. to take care of that. Maybe. And just shift it himself. I think one of the comments they made was they were using their reclaimed funds traditionally yeah. to, to pay for drug testing and such. So but they're, I mean, they're still spending a lot of money out of reclaim under this alternate. I mean, they're going from an ending actual balance in 20 down to a buck 78. And then their proposal is to have 32,000 left. How do you move people out and still spend more than you did last year? They're, um, they're not necessarily comfortable with the budget as it exists right now for reclaim. They're, they're thinking it could still be optimistic because they they do not have a well, that's with a big resource budget. estimate yeah it's basically they so they think there's going to be it, it could very well become a cut in revenue yeah so this is a, more this than is a, what's being this is a pessimistic guess this is a disaster <laughs> yes. yeah they're they're expecting worse but okay at this point based on the information they get they have like a dashboard it gives them updates kind of like monthly yeah. where things are going but all right I can live with that it's not a Certainly not etched in stone from their point of view. Uh -huh. So, just to get my numbers right, they want to move somebody from what your account is twenty three zero one zero yes. into the general fund. I was looking at the wrong page. Where are you at, Matt? Um, Reclaim. It's on the third page of this. Okay. Well, their expenditures go down in Reclaim. What do you mean? So that's what they're taking, yeah, right? They're, they're pulling, taking because they're pulling three people out. So that salary benefit line's dropping there. Uh -huh. It's going to go up in your first page. I think that's the most of the difference I'm guessing funny or, I mean the numbers don't bear that out though it's not a full employee no because it's 299 yeah from 325 from 325 that's not a, even close oh no well, why don't you guys go back and study this one a little more and before we get even more confused you can I mean I, I see what he's doing I mean but let's just get a little more clarity Well, if you, if or it does make a little bit of sense, Pat, if you look at the twenty budget and twenty actual under reclaim, there's forty grand right there. Now you're talking another thirty. Okay, there's a that's a body. Yeah, two ninety nine. You can even look to the budget at three sixty five. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So it's not three bodies. Well, that's a big. Yeah. One versus that's, three is a big difference. Yeah, a big difference. <clears throat> there is nothing um, being moved into the detention home. They're just. What they're experiencing right now is they're having difficulty filling the jobs that they have. They, they seem to go I wouldn't be vacant for quite a while. I mean, they're, they're not some of the highest paying positions in the county. Um, but they are, um, again, they're looking at the budget versus budget. They think they would be 
within policy. Well, I think they had quite a few fewer kids that they were taking care of, too. There's a lot of factors, yeah. Yeah, you also had, um, you know, we have contracts with other counties. He just got a new county, didn't he? To, to take care of kids. Well, from what I understand, they weren't, they weren't, those counties weren't sending kids. Right, but didn't he just pick up a new county, I said? I think so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, the hiring there is always, that's a turnover in the hiring there has always been an issue. We've helped them out by increasing the wages and increasing the budget for that, and it's still an issue. So, yeah, I mean, you kind of almost went over reclaim already. Uh, one thing I'll point out is, yeah, the, the revenue certainly is unsure. But you look, can look at 2019, we had 295, and then it actually went up the next year in 20 to 325. So go up, we could go down. There. I think they're taking a worst case scenario type look at this one. So. And this is one of those we don't know till the next state budget comes yeah. out. Yeah, right. <clears throat> and that's going to be after we would yeah. pass yeah. our budget. So Department of Job and Family Services got the same problem on the salary and benefits. They spent four million one sixty eight. Budget was four million three sixty three, and now they're asking for four million. Go over the state side of the detention home. I thought we just did. Oh no, that was refund, but <coughs> nothing on it for us, is there? Huh? Is there anything that we have on that? No, not really. The only thing. Um, Lately, that has been going on is um, sharing of capital resource or capital improvement projects. Yeah. We've been having to pay a little bit more out of the general fund for the local side of the facility. But it's still, they're still paying more than 50%, right? Yeah. And we own 50% of the building. Yeah. They, they didn't have any projects? No. Okay. No. They did not mention any projects. Okay. All right. Sorry to cut you off that. No, that's all right. So, yeah, I was... <coughs> you got the similar situation happening on John Family Services Public Assistance. Yeah. They, they did really good at 4168 last year because I know she was down a couple employees. Right, they, they seemed like about every other month or so they were having to try to fill vacant positions. But yeah, so they, they've not been fully staffed. Positions they were not going to fill. I was a couple of at least two. I was going to go there. Yeah. So, but if you budget to your point, the same number, you know. This is yeah. chicken or the egg. Are we going to have a hiring freeze next year? Well, it's not even the same number. It's close. It's close. But if you budget the four million three sixty nine and you have a hiring freeze, how does that work? You got the money, but you can't <laughs> hire was, anybody new. That was actually part of Judge Delameter and Julie's comments in family court was they had some positions budgeted in twenty, but when the hiring freeze came out, they stopped. They didn't do anything with them. So I mean So are we gonna continue I guess we're just gonna have to freeze? cross well, our at least they dropped their number where JFS hasn't done that. They did what? At least the court dropped their their number for the budget for salaries and benefits, but job and family services is not. Well they're within five thousand dollars. And they dropped supplies and they dropped services, one million six versus one million eight sixty four. Yeah. Well, I think I think since this is all money that's not ours anyway, <coughs> revenue side, right? Why don't you figure out if she's going to hire two more people or not? 
Because that's what it boils down to, isn't it? That's the difference. I think the answer is no. I'm sorry, I was distracted by my stupid phone. <laughs> that was on silent. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, there's still a hiring freeze. I mean, we just look at January's number. It'd be pretty dumb to start bringing a bunch of people back. That is in, it's a case by case. Yeah, sure. I mean, there, there's been certain circumstances some where. Some folks have been told no, some have been allowed to, but it's, yeah, it's in the I policy. I think what we've said basically, as long as it's, you know, if it's part of a plan to transition to smaller offices, it's considered differently than if it's just a straight person by person or a straight swap. Yeah, the only variable here is, Matt, is this not in our money? Well, this, this one, money. right, this one. I think, and you can look at this a little closer, Ed, you know, the detailed documents, but I recall them saying they were going to hire one or two more people through grant dollars. It's kind of the, the wheel, however you say that, the next fund. Yeah. We, we don't budget people in there. Everything kind of hits either public assistance or CSEA, I guess, in terms of the wages. And then they do that. Oh, in this one? Yes. No, uh, children's services well, and public assistance and shared employees. Right. They, is, they, in this, is in this fund. Right, right. I was double checking with Deb this morning, making sure, and she said, well, yeah, I, Brian did talk when we met about some of the programs they had going on. Oh, that's right. The, but the that's going to hit. in here, too. Right. That's yeah. going to hit in here. Yep. And then they're going to have to transfer the money around because. So that's part of it. That's, yeah, it's. Who's Delage landed, Pete? Um, it's a copying finance company, copier finance company. Those are some interesting names for some of those businesses. <clears throat> so, where do, where do we? I mean. This is going to keep coming up. Where do we land on this then? If if what we said is budget, right? But yet you have a hiring freeze. If, are we doing the hiring freeze next? You know, for twenty one. I assume we are. I don't know how the wording works as far as what trumps what. Huh? <laughs> what takes precedence over the other? Yeah, watch that. <laughs> if if we have a freeze in place, but. We approve a budget the money. that has, yeah, I don't know. Isn't that a catch-22? Because, again, my thinking was agree. We, I, I think the, the hiring freeze is more targeted to the general fund. Well, no, it, no, it wasn't. It was targeted to everybody. It was. Well, I, I mean, no, I think the hiring freeze trumps the budget, and that's that. You put a budget in, you don't meet your budget, that's okay. You don't have to hit. You don't have to make it up. I'm thinking with that is we well, said. Why don't they give more raise, pay raises? You got well, the money. Well, we've, we've always said if, as long as you don't go over your budget and your line item, do whatever you want, elected official. Because my thinking was we said budget of twenty, roll it into this year. You want that? We're done. We're See, done. I think I. But I, with the thinking being, there's going to be one or two here, one or two people here. They're not going to hire last year because we put the freeze in yeah. so they in essence are taking one for the county and not spending yeah. that money which is yay which is why we Pandemic, should have said actual <laughs> but we move into the next year yeah. and we're kind of saying no we're okay with the budget we approved because we obviously approved it so move it into this year do you replace the exact same thing you were thinking you were going to do at some point in the year we don't know do they find a way to make it work judge delamater finds a way to but, but she's got two hundred more thousand dollars to spend here, in in her budget. So if you approve this budget based on you know the theory that it was the same as the twenty budget, to me, you could just take the two hundred thousand dollars and do something with it with the existing employees because you can't hire anybody. 
Well, under a different appointing authority, I think that's certainly the case. I mean, well, you got to understand that there is a bargaining unit over here, right? You don't go. You not a good idea to go outside right. of that contract. Well, I agree with that. But if they were negotiating the contract, I would say there's two hundred thousand dollars more for us. We're not negotiating the contract. But if you were, if you were, <laughs> but we're not. But it just seems well, I, like. I mean, I think under us. I mean, speaking for the people who are under the commissioners as appointing authority, you ought to adjust it down to the actual. I mean, that's what we would do. Mm -hmm. Now, if other people want to play the semantic game, and yes, it says budget. I, mean, I can't argue with that. But we certainly have say in our world. Yeah, at least start off the actual and let them explain why it has to be higher. Yeah. Well, if they can point to grants, okay. Yep. But let's point those out. Yeah, I, th I mean, I think that's fair. Yeah. And we're, I mean, we're excited. We want to give them a pat on the back. Yeah, that besides, yeah, again, that had in the bonus that wasn't in the budget. And so that real number should be even lower than that. Yeah. Well, I'd like to see that too, Ed, as you move through this. About 4.1. Yeah, that's, you should be doing that. You should have some note somewhere under here that says it included $200,000 worth of bonuses. And I would point that out to the folks you're talking to, because remember, you guys got this money. It's it's not hard to do. I mean, it's okay. it's it's a boom, stands alone number. You just look right. into the details. It's, I mean, we can add that. Go back and. And when you're talking to them, say if we don't do that this year, then you got that money too. Right. But more or less for the various departments that funnel through the commissioner's authority, we're. Instead of 20 budget becoming 21's budget, 21 or 20's actual net of any I'm exception. I'm just leery of the can of worms that's going to open now. It's because we told folks last fall what we were thinking. And if they're doing what they're doing, they've spent the last two and a half months figuring those numbers. And I get it. it there's, there's some big differences here. I understand that. But we change that field now to them and they're going to literally have to sit there and go well wait a minute I just spent two months putting this budget together it works I'm good okay and now we're literally going to come back to them and say no it's not good well all we got to do is just say we're still instituting the hiring freeze so you have all this money you can't do anything with it anyway and that's fine yeah, it's um, the same. you know that's the prudent but, way to work because well, it is but as Matt said we didn't look at the sales it's like I just look at the sales tax already first month in well I mean we there haven't been a year that I've been here that we haven't changed the budget policies halfway through the process. Because we realized we made a mistake. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we just, we had a, a thought in our head and we tried to write it on paper. And then these situations come up where we're like, oh, well, that was dumb on our part. But, that wasn't but, what we but were trying to do. Clearly, convey. this is a big difference. Clearly, usually it's very difficult to foresee what we've had to deal with. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I know it's a can of worms. You're right, Steve. But... You, you just had two glaring examples right here where yeah. it's it's catch-22. They got $200,000. We should be able to hire two or three people. We put a hiring freeze on. They're going to say, wait a minute. But I can remember we telling this to the auditor a hundred times. Rick, we don't care what you pay your people. That's your business as a separate elected official. All we do is set your line item for payroll. That's what we do. And that's what we did last year. We did. To that number. We did. But now everybody worked hard to bring that number down. Should we work hard again? I mean, I, I think well, it isn't our job to make sure we're operating as efficiently as possible? I mean, I'm not sure in the salary line anybody worked all that hard. I think what you had was people left and they didn't get replaced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and so if the if the office is functioning well, then the at other 4. folks are 1, working hard though. No, oh, I'm yeah, sure. I'm the workers. I'm talking about the the appointing authorities and the bosses. I mean, it wasn't like they made some draconian cuts. They just had someone leave and didn't replace. I mean, so I mean, if the office is running for four point one six million dollars and ran for four point one seven and um, eighteen and four point two and nineteen, it ought to pretty well run for four point. One six to four point 
two and, and 20, regardless of what number we, what they proposed and we approved in 2020. And then it still is not even in compliance because this year it goes up to 4.369. We will uh, regroup. I, I think we just keep working through this and seeing how it goes, but people, yeah, that, like work, people that work underneath the commissioners, right. it's easy for us. We're just making a decision to hold it at that. I mean, we don't have to explain to ourselves. We don't have to explain. Well, I mean, the next one is, you know, Brian noted they had some additional grants that was going to, when they're going to use those funds, it's going to affect the budget a little bit because theirs did not, the total did not stay under. It went up a little bit, but that's because of some of the funding sources that they got. And Ed, I think, you should warn us because you're 500,000 in the hole that you got to cut to the way it looks right now. Well, I've, but you like have I said got, earlier, I've told people till we pass a budget, there's no real deal. Right. It's the plan in October, November was we think this will work. Like but, we've done before, I've told them Medicaid managed care forced us one year to do a significant amount of revisions. Right. But the thing that's got me scared is this side of the page is blank expenses personnel and capital we haven't even got into you know or the exceptions yeah over on the on the long sheet yeah so I mean, you know you haven't even got into I need this and I need that well you know? we will be we had some we met with the sheriff and we have to you know revise he he pretty much said because we got him the COVID cars he doesn't need vehicles this year and he knows dollar values he's looking to adjust his part-time salary rates and some things are in his standalone funds and stuff so I mean you meet it takes a long time to put his budget together just to meet with him and then once you meet with him it takes a, a while to sure well we'll let you unpack it so we're, but, we're having but cars and things that are built out of capital are not reflected in well, any other line in his budget. Typically, we initially show it on his general fund summary, and then we. But I, I understand where we've been paying him. Yeah, we know what's going on with the board of elections. I think that's not on the form yet. But they should go down a lot because they don't have a big election to run. True, it should based on a normal presidential election, which I don't think twenty was a normal presidential election. 21 should be very close to like what 17 was, I think. You would think. Well, it, yeah. So let's make it so. Real easy. 19. Yeah. But yeah, it, 19. it yeah. should be 80 to 100 thousand dollars less, based on what we started with. But let's, there, let's let's go through job and family services. Okay. Right now I mean, we, I'm just. Yeah. I mean. Well, but I. I much the only reason I bring it up is in the old days, you know, the years past. You, those line items on those other sheets are bigger than the, oh, you know, the difference no, there. So well, we see, my thinking, though, in that whole thing was thinking that people are going to go with their 2020 budget. There, there be should be zero in there. Yeah, there should be that's zero. Case, Just nothing. That, that'd be the because that's the only way they can have that preliminary budget that, meet that, the original. That'd be the so. first year it ever happened, but that's all right. <clears throat> yeah. So well, let's workforce investment opportunity. That one is, again... They, they mentioned that they were going to be up a little bit, but that's because of some funding sources they had. And I think they had the perception that they were going to be allowed to use those funding sources. They were not necessarily permanent programs, but they were, I think, things to try to help them through, get people back to work and sure. things like that. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't... When I look at the far right column, I, I didn't see that as a problem budgetarily they still had their overall budget was under their funding source when it says transfer where does that yeah. money come from um, well typically what most of that is that's they're reimbursing the public assistance fund back for those shared costs in other words employees that are shared amongst different areas in the agency there's no you see there's no direct salary and benefits mm -hmm. but they have people doing the workforce work okay if they're in the public assistance so you're 
transferring money back to reimburse that. And you'll notice, this is where we talked about they got the grant, they want to hire somebody, uh, spent 160 out of transfers last year, now they want 220. There's your person. Okay. Okay. They also, I think, um, all their, these funds have this random moment sampling thing that happens that they have to pull samples and then yeah. they have to reimburse back and forth. It's yeah. luckily they're the only ones, only department that's got to deal with this. Yeah, it's an interesting concept. It's a weird thing. To say the least. All right. So, um, children's services. Now, in the course of the discussion, um, of course, one thing they're not real certain is this kinship cost that's coming right. from Columbus, I believe. It's not finalized yet. They're not really sure how it's all going to work, but. They can hear the train whistle. They're just not sure what it's going to deliver to them. Um, and if you look at the far right column under alternate A, the county general fund transfer, Dev asked for 792. And at budget, preliminary budget time, it was like a million five. And that's the number that's currently in the long sheet, is what we initially thought. But because it's a fiscal, similar to what the mandated share is for public assistance. They don't know what it's going to be for the second half. Well, yeah, I don't, I think you're. So they're, on leave their own, alone. I'm surprised that they <coughs> said, just give me 792 because that's only the first half and we'll. Well, come on. I, I, I mean, come on. She feels, and, and she's looking at her fund, estimated fund balance at where it's at, that. Well, I think I think leave it at the higher number. Anyway. I mean, this is the place we've seen disaster numbers in the past. I mean, <laughs> this number fluctuates a couple percent. It's a big deal. If the other ones fluctuate a couple percent, mm -hmm. I think you better be leaving that number where it was. Yeah, I do too. I think it's still on the long sheet at the original. That's number. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. I saw that. In terms of what we're looking at here. Yeah. I, 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 I all right. Next. The uh, child support. Yeah, child support. I didn't have anything written down, Hank. Did you? <coughs> oh, the one the one change that came up, and we've been hearing about this, is their uh, the prosecutor's office is not going to be providing legal. You're going to have to go with a private attorney. Just for hearing uh, hearings. It's like a fourteen thousand dollar fluctuation. It's not a huge <clears throat> impact, but it is. A well, you better work in some number of kinship care wherever you think that's. Wherever you think that's going to happen, I mean, I got a feeling we're going to get hit with a bill. Oh, I mean, it's it's essentially the same as paying a foster parent. I agree, but you, so you it's better like board. So it's the number. boarding cost. Yeah, it's not as big as I thought, but I bet you better put. I mean, what would she say? There's like eight kids in kinship care. That's true. It's not a huge have, number, but we need num we need a number in there. I think I think that we're going to get stuck with it. Go back. They they were talking about their non-certified uh, foster caregivers, get like thirty dollars a day or something, hmm. or ten dollars a day. I mean, it's yeah, but it's retroactive. Yes, yeah, so to the first of the year. Yep. So that could be a little bit bigger than we think. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be, it'd be interesting to see what, let's get a proposal, see what it, they think it's going to be, you know. We know how many kids are in there times the number of days. And get their real number, so what they think the total number would be, and then we can figure out, are we going to need half of that? Are we going to need a third of it? Are we going to need three quarters of it? Are we going to need it all? All right. You work in, prog work in progress? Comments, Board of Elections. Huh? Been hearing about the comp time? They're close. Yeah. Do, mm -hmm. do we still yeah. approve? Yeah, yeah I've talked to yeah. Campbell about it. Because we were supposed to be meeting with them Friday on their budget, and I don't it keeps think it, it active, and they can sell it to somebody else. Yeah. Huh. 
Um, yeah, I, I've talked to Jeff and Nick about it. I think. Okay. We're in um, position. We did get Jack Farshman's budget. He said, "I'm not interested in meeting with you people. Do what you want." <laughs> but in his document, I believe he's taking credit for the large carryover balance. In <laughs> twenty. Uh, so wait, what does that mean? And he wants to spend all but eight hundred thousand of it. But he's not telling you on what. I'm sorry, he doesn't want to meet with us and go back and forth and have dialogue. So, over but he did submit a. He submitted a book a, with oh this. Yeah. We want this product. He didn't last he year. Gave he us gave us, he gave us his usual book. Oh well, that's that. And the two-line budget last year caused some confusion, so a book would be helpful. I mean, actually, in a way, he gave us more detail. Yeah, that, I mean, that's what he used to do, and then he didn't do that well, last year. Can we see that next time? Let's see a copy of, you know, what they want to do. Yeah, well, well, I don't, I we don't need the backup, but at least a well, He uh, He takes, summary. when he does it, and he did, he, he'll take the auditor system and put in the line item that he wants. Oh, okay. He's asking for he didn't give pay increases. He did say he might want to re replace his uh, surveyor. But other than that, I mean, sick leave conversion is a. Well, yeah, let's, I mean, we got to take a look at these and yeah. get, keep rolling with them. So um, not a biggie, but Aaron, you're supposed to remind me. Oh, bees. Bees, bees, bees. We've had this apiary inspector for a lifetime or right. two making thirty five hundred dollars he contacted Aaron's office and said I'd like a raise thank you very much so we reached out to him he said he'd like to get paid based on the locations he has to visit in the course of the inspection season he'd like to get in his eighty dollars per site based on the number of locations had put him around fifty-five, fifty-four hundred dollars a year, based on the thirty-five hundred that he's been getting paid. So How many apiary inspectors are there in the state? Like, I mean, qualified people. Yeah, he's getting to that. The state of they're, they're all they're all over the place. It seems to be more like a I don't know <laughs> something that you do because you love the ecosystem or whatever, but. Um, Talked with his, there's like a regional person and got some comparables. The 3,500 versus what he's asking for. I mean, it's not like there's people out there making 20 grand a year doing this. Right. It's and just, it's a law you have to do this. You have to have it. No, you do not have to. But everybody that's in into those kind of like downstairs, the conservation. Well, why don't they district? pay for it down there? Why are we even involved in this? Well, they got people that do squirrels and deers and. Can't they do bees we, too? We, we talked to, I talked to Eric, he forgot, and then I talked to him. Oh, again. I was yes. talking about Ohio State University. Oh, not Eric. The, no. the, the bug guy. Yeah. Yeah. Ohio State University this has. Regional person that I talked to to try to get similar comparables, she said she was aware that some conservation districts were kind of involved in this line of work. So I, when I heard that, I asked Eric Dodrell, I said, are you familiar with that program? Yeah, you know. So do we know, does our person do for us, does also for Heron? And but if we move $3,500 into soil and water for this, take over this responsibility, wouldn't it draw down? Yeah, 80% or 70% no, of state funding. Yeah, it would. Why didn't we do this years ago? Well, they could just contact where and, Eric was taking it is he, you know, they throw the milkweed along the roads and things like that, so they're kind of into that whole He's going to talk to his folks and see if maybe they wouldn't be willing to help subsidize. Well, here. No, we just cool. But Patrick got a very great idea. Here, we give the guy what he wants. Yeah. We just take the money, give it to soil and water. They leverage it with their state funds. So really, it's everybody not even that they hire the appearance. We can, they yeah. Do it yeah. Yeah. They can Why are we doing it? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. All good idea. Done. All right. That's you done? It. I. I think done? so. Yes, I'm done. All right. Do we have any uh, public comment? I know there's a lot of people here. There's a three-minute <laughs> limit funny. to the conversation. Do you guys want to talk about water and sewer rates? You good with this today? Anything you guys want to talk about, we're open. Sir, would you like to start? 
I just wish we'd find something else to go till about four. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of nestled in there. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. All right, anybody else? All right, going once. I take it you're all in favor, so. We got resolutions. Oh, we have resolutions. We got resolutions. We got a lot of them. I just want to get, a lot of them. you know, because a lot of these folks have been sitting here waiting patiently. Yeah, I understand. Uh, first for our meetings, February f uh, motion to cancel. I think the idea is we're going to cancel these, and then as needed, we can add if we need to. But cancel February's 1st, 4th, 8th, 11th, 15th, 17th, 18th, 22nd, and 25th. Shockner? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Senegal? Yes. Uh, move for to award the bid for the Metawanga Regional Pump Station, A Street and Cranberry Creek Pump Station, rebid to North Bay Construction. Second. Mr. Shockner? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Senegal? Yes. Move for adoption resolution, Board of Commissioners, for the purpose of entering into agreement, addendum number two with Corso's Flower and Garden Center. Second. Mr. Faulkner? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Move for adoption resolution, Board of Commissioners, for the purpose of up, up, approving the updated Erie County Natural Hazard Mitigation Plan. Second. Mr. Faulkner? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Move for adoption resolution, Board of Commissioners, for the purpose of authorizing payment to a DECO USA for payment of services provided to human resources. Second. Mr. Shockman? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenandoah? Yes. Move for adoption resolution, Board of Commissioners, for the purpose of authorizing payment to Friends Service Company, Inc. for payment of supplies provided to the public defender. Second. Mr. Shockman? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenandoah? Yes. Is that it? That's it. Motion to adjourn. Second. Yes. Mr. Shawner? Yes. Mr. Shawner? Yep.